from coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. major Christian events in America and across the world, covering over 500 million souls with the good news of new life in Jesus Christ. Now from Southern California, we invite you to be a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. chair beside the old fireplace and let's talk about Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Let's get excited about what God is doing in this world. Oh, I'll tell you, I've never been more excited in my life. I spent maybe 12 hours in Washington at the <laughs> National Religious Broadcasters Convention last night and I heard reports come in from around the world. I attended the big international banquet, honey. And I mean, people were there from almost every country of the world. And the same message is coming in from everywhere. Revival is here. The Spirit of the Lord is falling. Miracles are happening. Lives are being changed. I mean, it's glorious beyond measure what's happening. The prophecy of Joel is coming to pass in the latter day. I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. People, it's happening. There is no question about it. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. And then I got to accept the beautiful award really on your behalf. And I'll do a little roll in on that. So I should have jet lag. ought to be tired. But I feel like giving the devil trouble tonight. How about you? I think we ought to just fix his wagon good. How are you, sweet Annie? Thank you for taking Praise the Lord last night so I could go. Well, it's not ever the same without you, but I, you know, listening to James Robinson and hearing that voice crying, Church, become one. Yes. And Jesus said that they would be one, Father, as you and I are one. And we know that that bride is going to be without spot or wrinkle when Jesus comes. And you know, I see something so incredible happening. As many, many gathered last night, and I talked to them late into the night after the meeting, I, I was just curious, and I would ask them, what denomination are you? Oh, I just love Jesus. <laughs> Where do you go to church? Oh, I, just, I go, you know, and this one, that. But people aren't this or no. that anymore. They just love Jesus and are just a part of the body and everybody coming together. You know, they'll, they'll try to make up a word like I'm a, a Catholic Baptist Pentecostal, you know, <laughs> or they're whatever they are. And it is so beautiful. I know that rejoicing is going on Amen. in heaven because Amen. the body is one and they are coming together in unity and love. And I am so excited about that. You know, we didn't get to talk a lot about it. We were in Phoenix for about 10 days, had beautiful meetings over there. Then we stopped by Midland, Texas and got to meet and greet those beautiful people there in Midland. Been a part of the family so long. Wanted to say hi to some very special people there. And then on to Albuquerque, got to see our brand new little mm. station, not little, big station, oh, for power. the first time. And that is a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. Have, has anybody ever been to Albuquerque? Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Beautiful city. It's got lovely weather. It's a mile high, just like Denver, you know, and just oh. a gorgeous area. I was there just again last night. We had the Land Eagle run and refuel again, and I was watching Channel 23, <laughs> Albuquerque, sitting there for about a half an hour, and Praise the Lord was on, and uh, one of the old, you know, late-night reruns, and it was just great. <laughs> 
Well, that's all. I just yeah. want to tell you I love you, and I guess some of our favorite people in the whole wide world are here tonight. Brother Ken and Gloria Copeland can't tell you how much we love them, and Debbie and Godfrey, and I, I, we just love them all. They're so special. Let's have them all come right now. Ken and Gloria, just come on up here. Yeah. Debbie, Godfrey, let's just all tell them how much we love them and appreciate them. We'll howdy for just a minute and have a word of prayer. Just come on up anywhere. This is just your living room, too. And if you can get Debbie, bring her on up here. And Jan wants to ask her about the new baby coming. Hello, Gloria. How are you, darling? Hello, Ken. How's my buddy? God bless you all. So glad you're here tonight. We'd like for you just to say hello. And uh, I see you got your sword with you. And Always. Is there... <laughs> Something you want us to get ready for tonight? Well, now that you mention it, uh, <laughs> oh, there's just, you know, there's lots of good things. And in fact, I had to add two more ribbons to my Bible. I couldn't keep up with it with just two. I'm um, especially moved in my spirit the last few days concerning Scripture uh, in the uh, Gospel of Luke, 17th chapter. Jesus started talking to his own staff members, and he said, anybody that does anything wrong to you, you forgive them. I don't care how many times they do it, you forgive them. And he went down through that teaching and gave them that. And immediately they said, increase our faith. <laughs> now, they, they, see, there was a lot of trouble among the, his own staff. They, they fussed with one another about who's going to be the greatest and all this kind of thing. And so he was teaching them about that. And immediately they didn't think they had the faith to do it. Hmm. They didn't think they could forgive like that. And they said, increase our faith. And he said some very unusual things about their faith. He, he didn't say anything about increasing it. He said, use it. It'll grow. It's a seed. In other words, it takes faith to do anything, doesn't it? Well, it really does. Yeah, it really does. It takes faith in God to do it. Will we get into that a little bit later on? I got a feeling we're going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some tough questions for you tonight. Right. Some of you out there may have some questions you want to fire in. You know, the, the so-called faith message has been under great attack. Always has been. And the reason for that, you, you people like you can ought to take that as a compliment. And I know you do. Yeah. Because that means you have hit on a truth that has got the devil scared spitless. And I mean, that's why he's coming after you the way it is. <laughs> if he wasn't scared, he'd leave you alone. There wouldn't be any controversy. The fact that there's controversy around this means it's true. And it's good. Yeah. I'm not supposed to preach tonight. <laughs> let, me, let me have Jan say hi to Debbie. And, uh, oh, hi, hi, Debbie. Debbie and... Uh, Debbie and... Who knows? <laughs> We're not sure. No, My we don't know. We just know that it's one this time. It's one. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how is Jordan? He's fine. He's and fine. How old? School. Five. Debbie yeah. Boone doesn't have a five-year-old. Five oh my and two goodness! Two two-year-olds. <laughs> the little the girls. The girls are two. See, almost Dustin two and a half. And Dustin and Gabrielle. Oh, how beautiful! Te can you tell us a mommy story about how cute they are, or something oh, they've my said or goodness. done? Goodness! Oh no, on the spot, I'm going to have to work on that one for <laughs> for you, Jen. Oh, how, what is? How is it raising twins, Debbie? You is know, it? every every day it gets better and better. I enjoy it so much. There there are moments like in any mother's life when everything gets crazy and you want to pull your hair and I feel inadequate as a mother so much of the time that I it makes me press closer to the Lord it's a good thing <laughs> but I enjoy them having two and watching the two of them so different and enjoying each other so much has really been a blessing and I really am thankful now after the fact when I first found out you know at seven months okay. pregnant I was scared <laughs> but I'm thrilled Oh, how sweet. And the older they get, I understand twins are always so close. They, they are, are like just forever super close. Yeah. They, they don't like to be separated, these two. <laughs> really? You can see it already oh, yeah. in them. Do they like to dress alike? And well, they like to, they have color preferences. They like to wear the same things, but they like to choose their own color. So. <laughs> I love it. Isn't it great? So this time it doesn't matter, girl or boy? Or it doesn't matter, but if you just want to know what my heart's desire is, <laughs> I'd love to have another boy and even the score. But <laughs> anyway, any way it happens is fine with me. <laughs> I love it. And understand, Laurie, your sister? Any minute, twins. She's, um, she could be in labor right now, for all I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So uh, pray for her. <laughs> the Boone family is growing. Prolific, yes. My goodness. So how many... 
have you, the it four will be, girls. Well, it will be 11 grandchildren by the time I'm through. When Lori has her two, and then I'll have this, and there will be 11. This. I'm scu excuse me. This little one. <laughs> Whoever you are, that will make 11. You mean Pat Boone is a grandfather 11, 11 <laughs> times. <laughs> he still looks 35. That's I'm true. sorry. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you tonight. Thank you. Has the Lord been telling you something wonderful lately? Or oh, to? boy. You know, it's, he's been telling me something wonderful through a difficult time, which has been that I haven't really felt like I've been hearing him, but it's been a time where I've known he's right there and it's a testing time and I'm having to, to reach so much harder than ever before and get into the Word and be disciplined and I know he's right there. I feel that he's right there, but he's not talking and I want answers right now and he's somehow teaching me patience, but it's great. I feel myself growing and I'm not discouraged and it's just a place that I, I, I guess I needed to be and I didn't even even know it. So I, um, I, I know I'm maturing. I'm getting into the Word more than ever before and realizing that I had been a little lazy there, too. <laughs> That's beautiful. And many of you know she's married to Gabri Farrar, and he is Rosemary Clooney and Jose Farrar's son. That's right. And he's a beautiful Christian. We were up there just <laughs> sharing with Ken, and he was just joining right in. And yeah. Beautiful family. Yeah. We love you, Debbie. Well, I love you, too. All of us <laughs> have prayed for and loved her so many years, <laughs> haven't we? Thank you for coming tonight. Join hands with somebody there, and let's just agree in the name of Jesus, if one can put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand, what can a few <laughs> million of us do together tonight? Can just lead us in our prayer. Father, we praise and bless you tonight. Mm. We ask you in the name of Jesus to think through our minds, yes. speak through our lips, let us hear with your ears, and bring into our hearts some of the answers to the cries of people that are hurting. As we move into things tonight from your word, we expect to say the perfect word at the perfect moment so that somebody can be delivered in the name of Jesus. And to you we give all of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Get your Bibles out. We're going to get into the word. Just open up your little ears. Debbie's going to sing a beautiful song for us. I'm going to take you to Washington, D.C. for about three minutes. And then we're going to have Arthur Blessed give a little special word to Ken and Gloria Copeland that's going to just bless them to pieces in just a few minutes. Let's tell Debbie one more time thanks for coming and sharing Jesus with us tonight. Now is the time.
up there, honey. We'll go right back and have you sing another song, because I know when Ken and Gloria and I, and we all get into it, I mean, <laughs> into the weightier matters of the law here, why, uh, it'll be a little while, but, so we want you to sing another song. Well, that lady does sing, oh. doesn't she? She sure does. Ooh. What Good I just story. said to, uh, oh, yeah. to Ken is, Debbie is, God's creating a lot of what I call bridge people these days. Uh, for example, James Robinson is a bridge man. I mean, he's, he's bringing the body together. Southern Baptists and us Pentecostals didn't used to even talk to each other. But now we have to because James is in there in the middle. And he's bringing us together in love. And, yeah. and Debbie, she, she, you know, the young people love her and admire her. And, and yet even as old folks, you know, we, uh, she's a bridge person. Yeah, and God's good. creating bridges. These, oh, boy. I could get into that a little bit tonight, but I won't. I want to take you to Washington, D.C., but before I do, Gloria, I read a little something that you wrote the other day, and I declare a truer word could have never been spoken, and, and help me remember, it was like so many of us have been planting seed for some time, but 86 is going to be, tell me. What I got in, just as I was in prayer, right before the turn of the year, was that things planted are going to come up in 1986. Things planted, and I got that that was spiritual things, financial things, prayer, uh, dedication, you know, people have dedicated themselves to the Lord for different callings that they've got. Well, do you want me to tell you how that prayer is already being I answered? I wish you would. <laughs> in, in our lives? Yes. This is going to bless you. Thirteen years ago, we got Channel 40. Three years, took another whole three years of waiting and praying and testing and whatever to get the next channel. Another whole three years before Miami came along. Then about 1980, uh, you know, maybe one station a year or every other year. Do you know that in a space of ten days, the Federal Communications Commission has approved ten more to God. television licenses for us? One a day for a period of 10 days. And this is planting that has gone on yeah. for years, years. past. Yeah. And I mean, that's just the that's 10 days. That's exactly the sort of thing that I got in, in my spirit that's going to it's happen. Happening. Yeah. It's happening. It's just all springing up right now. And I think it means one main thing, may mean other things, but I think it simply means we know he's coming yeah, oh, is very soon. Oh, this is harvest time. Yeah. You, you go through times... Uh, there's time to plow, there's time to plant, there's time to water, there's time for it to grow, and then there's harvest time. And uh, we're in that right now. The things that we're seeing on television, see, that's not just the good things. Mm. It said, did God just said things planted will come up in 1986. Mm. And so the things we're seeing on television right now, a, a, a lot of what we're seeing in the disaster areas mm. like uh, airline crashes and all that kind of thing. A lot of that is just simply seed that's been planted that by the grace of God hadn't come up, but it's coming up. Mm. You, you know, we made bar, room out, bar rooms out of our airliners and, and all that kind of thing, live like a bunch of um, demons. Well, mm -hmm. the seed is coming up. Mm. And so uh, it's very important right now to understand that. And another thing that the Lord said, and you correct me now if I don't get this right. He said, um, <laughs> she will. I'd, but I'd rather you do it now. I've been waiting on this. Go ahead. I'd rather you do it now instead of waiting when we get home. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> the <laughs> Lord also light, said <laughs> uh, those that the observers, the ones that are watching, but not doing, would wish they had planted. Did I get it yeah. right? Yeah, observers, those among us that hear but don't do, and there's a lot of those, are going to wish that they'd planted. They're gonna it's going to be so obvious. Yeah. The pl harvest is going to be so obvious. Mm -hmm. The things coming up are going to be so obvious. So those who haven't sown are going to be very obvious by the lack of the yeah. harvest. And, and I the think fruit. a lot of them are going to begin to sow because they see the harvest in the lives of those that have planted. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. That's right. Well, God. I just wanted you to know that in the life of Trinity that and even so Jan exciting. and me, That's that great. word is Isn't coming to pass. I mean beyond my wildest expectations. Which means everywhere we go. Ken and Gloria go. And you're on that prime <laughs> Sunday oh, night. I know. So every time a new station comes on, you're there with it. Praise yeah. God. Oh, it's fantastic. We're going to have those hundred stations before 86. I believe that. I, I, I know I it. it. I know it in my spirit. <laughs> Let me just take you, this will only take about three minutes, and then Debbie will sing for you again. Let me just take you real quickly to Washington, D.C. As I said a moment ago, I got to attend just for a few hours. Uh, oh, I saw so many wonderful people that. Uh, I wish I had time to tell you. Uh, later Hello on, I'll tell you. Oh, I bumped into R.W. Shambach. Shambach Brother Shambach was there. Jim had Baker. a great time. Bumped smack into Jim, Jim Baker and said hello to got him. To Jim and I got to reminisce a little bit about some of the early days when Brother we Zimmerman. worked in. Brother Thomas Zimmerman, my uh, general superintendent for many years. <laughs> uh, I got to say hello to him. And, uh, oh, let me think. Let me think. Um, Oh, so many you were telling mm -hmm. me. Now my I've mind has gone blank, but anyway. I just met so many wonderful friends, even for those few hours. But the highlight was the International Convention, where delegates from all over the world came. And as I said, Ken, Gloria, oh, the report is the same from everywhere. I Isn't mean, no place is being left out. The Spirit of God is falling, and the victory reports are coming in. And what happened, the reason I went last night at the invitation of Ben Armstrong, the executive director and the board of the NRB, was to accept on your behalf a beautiful award that is in recognition of the way God is opening the foreign doors, not for just programs, but for whole TV stations. I got a bill again today for another $50,000. It's time to make the next payment on the South African uh, studio. The station is, is done, but the studio is being built right now. And so South Africa is coming. We met with President Moy of Kenya. Well, I tell you in the spot some of the things here that the Lord is doing through Trinity. So let's go back to Washington, D.C. This happened just a few hours ago. I'll try to keep my eyes, <laughs> eyes open tonight. And this is the award that I received on your behalf. Another man who has been very innovative in his use of television and the technology of television is Dr. Paul Crouch. And Paul, if you will head this way as I talk a little bit about you. Uh, every time I talk to Paul, he tells me about more stations. And we spoke, we spoke for just a few minutes before uh, our dinner began, and he told me of yet more stations. I want him to share in a moment his vision for international broadcasting. I know that Paul has a station in Italy operating. I know he has plans for uh, uh, a station in the Caribbean. I know he has plans for stations in Africa. And uh, God has truly blessed him. How many U's do you have on the air right now? See, he doesn't even know. <laughs> 32. <laughs> 32 stations. Yes. You have... Uh, some 40 or so low powers that you're, some are on and you're bringing on the air, yes, plus sir. full power stations. Uh, you were telling me uh, in, uh, in, uh, you're going into, you're, you're into Canton, you're into uh, Charlotte. Uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us a little bit about the latest, Paul. Uh, I rejoice to be here with you today and share some exciting new developments that are happening. At the present time, we have about 30 either full or low power stations on the air, a satellite network with over 450 cable affiliates, and uh, America is being reached. We're, we're uh, reaching out to build 10 more full power stations and uh, negotiating for about 68 more low power stations. But what I rejoice in today is the fact that the doors of foreign broadcasting are open. Yes. 
We have a station on in the West Indies, Nevis St. Christopher. Our Guatemala station has been on the air nearly two years. Uh, the government of Honduras has just given us a permit. Three stations are on now in Italy. The South African station, and I know why I'm here, or one of the reasons I'm here tonight, I've met some wonderful new friends now from South Africa. It will be on the air this year. Doors that were locked shut tight just months ago are now swinging off their hinges. It is absolutely a miracle of God. And we rejoice with all of you who've loved and prayed for and supported. And this award tonight that I receive, I will receive it on one condition, that I may receive it on behalf of thousands of God's people across America who have loved and prayed for and given. Some of you are in this room tonight. And we just know that this signals one thing. The end of this dispensation draws nigh and the coming of the Lord is at hand. And we're pulling out the stops and going with all the might that we have because Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. And then he said, in effect, I will come. I believe we can literally hasten the return of the Lord Jesus Christ if we'll get on with it and get the job done. God bless you. I love you all tonight. Well, Paul... For your uh, international outreach and your vision for the world in television, Paul, we want to honor you with this award, this international award from the National Religious Broadcasters. May God richly bless you and make 1986 uh, an even greater year for you and your Thank work. Thank you. God, God bless, bless you all. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful, wonderful evening. So, honey, hang, hang on. this on the wall out there. It belongs to all of them. And let's just keep on building those stations and pulling down the strongholds of the enemy. Uh, I know one of the main reasons that the Lord let me be there was not only to receive this little award, which I appreciate, and I really, I mean that from my heart. It, it was a great honor for all of us. But I got to sit between Bishop... It, uh, Isaac, and I won't try to say his last name, but he is one of the great black Christian leaders of Africa, South Africa, and the executive director of the NRB for South Africa. He would be the Ben Armstrong of South Africa. The Lord put me right between them at the table there. And he has just been nominated. Now, let me tell you how the Lord... It just blows my mind sometimes. This gentleman, who is the head of the National Religious Broadcasters of South Africa, has just been appointed by President Bota to the SABC, which is the Television Regulatory South African Broadcasting like Commission, FCC it's like the FCC yeah. here. He will be like an FCC commissioner there. And he said, Paul, I know all about what you're doing in Siskai, South Africa. I know Dostain. I know all that. He, he knew everything. And he said, I am now a new commissioner, or will be shortly. And he said, where would you like to build another station in South Africa? <laughs> I said, how about uh, Johannesburg? <laughs> he said, you've got it. He said, you've got it. Whoa. I said, Pretoria. He said, you've got it. I said, Cape Town. Whoa. You've got it. Wow. He said, and when we come with you and Gloria to Harara, Zimbabwe in April, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will go immediately from there for a meeting with President Peter, Peter oh, Bota. hallelujah. And then to a meeting with the SABC. And he said, I tell you, Paul, uh, you will have the permits to be placed in your Whoa. hand when you come in April oh. and build Christian TV stations all over Praise South Africa. God. Now, I'll tell you, that mm. just blew my mind <laughs> in the light of the fact that we had struggled so hard to get that first little station on the tip of South Africa. The devil thought, oh! But now, it's like the whole country has just burst open mm. and God is doing a, a quick work. Hey, isn't we're going to talk about going. A lot of people have inquired about good. going. Good, good, good. Mentioned the tour. Surely, but we'd be glad to. Yeah. And well, when is it? Right now would be a good time to just tell, what, pastors and Christian leaders only. Yeah, the, the uh, thrust of this meeting will be uh, for leadership, pastors, um, you know, anybody that's in ministry, associate pastors, any kind of, any person that is in a leadership role. It is a, an evangelism conference. There's been a new hotel built in uh, Harare, Zimbabwe. 
And the, the meetings in the daytime will be for training of uh, people in leadership roles. Now, there will be well over a thousand ministers from other nations of Africa that mm. uh, a number of ministries together are paying their way there and, and uh, paying all their expenses to see that they get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at night, we, we, we learn evangelism and talk about faith and, and so forth in the morning time. And then it, in the evening time, we go out under the biggest gospel tent on earth. No, the biggest tent, period. It's the biggest tent that has ever been constructed by mankind. Hmm. Seats 34,000. <laughs> that's bigger we go than out Barnum and Bailey, isn't it? Oh, I mean, that's... You, oh, Barnum and Bailey, you could have five circuses in that tent. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, the acts are better too. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I guarantee you, the acts of the Holy Ghost here. And uh, we go out at night, and we're we're having a, a week's meeting in Harare at night. And and um, uh, the thing that really interested me so much that uh, Reinhard Bonnke would talk to me about, he'll be preaching the evening services, and that's that tent belongs to his ministry, of course. Mm -hmm. He said, we want to teach it in the morning and go give the example in the evening. Amen. And Good. Oh, and and Good. is he ever one to set an evangelistic example, you know? Tell us again. You, you, you told us just briefly in your meeting about some of the tremendous things that, that God's doing oh, under that my. big tent. So signs and wonders and miracles. Just, well, it, it goes out into the area of beyond what you ask or think. Because when Gloria and I were there, um, he preached for a few moments and gave an altar call. And um, there were so many people in that altar call that I couldn't tell how many it was. And we got the count later. They first thought it was about 3,500, but then after it was all done, they had counseled with um, roughly 5,000 people. It was either just under or just over 5,000 people. He gave Christ. that one offering, that one altar call, and they ran. They, they pushed over the seats and everything else to get into that altar call. Mm -hmm. There's been entire sections of the tent that would receive the Holy Ghost at one time. Mm -hmm. There's been times when uh, maybe uh, three, four thousand people fell out under the power of God all at once, all of them speaking in other tongues when they hit the floor. Mm -hmm. Usually it's he, just has a, a, a he, very, he has mm -hmm. an altar call for the Holy Spirit once a week and they'll have maybe 5,000 people come and they will when they pray for them they all nobody touches them they all fall out so I said brother Bonky does that happen every meeting he said not every meeting but most of the time and it's things like that that you'll be able to see when Ken and I got it's really his meeting where there is his guest but when we got involved with it we felt that it would be such an experience for the men of and women of God here to go with us mm -hmm, to see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad you're carrying it on Trinity. It's, well, we're it's gonna, going to be We'll exciting. take some cameras over and we'll cover it. And of course, we'll bring a great report back, I know. It won't be live. But the reason, if I remember what you told me, you wanted these Christian leaders to go over there because yeah. you want them to we want see them to the, experience and bring it home. Uh, the glory we, of them. You know, while we were there, Paul, we saw people in that altar call that were, that were pouring their booze out on the ground. And the uh, throwing witchcraft fetishes off their bodies and, mm. and this kind of thing. I'm talking about thousands of people doing this. Now, this is not just one of these um, things where you have all these people that come running to them and don't understand what they're doing. They do understand. Mm -hmm. And they take them in, in counseling uh, and people counsel them that are native to their language and they are counseled in their language and when they come out of there and say we had 4,000 in the altar call, we had 8,000 in the altar call, they're talking about people that were counseled and they have uh, talked with them to the satisfaction of the counselor that that person was <laughs> actually born oh, again. Wow. And they're averaging, they're averaging now over 3,000 people per all called seven days a week. Oh, and we can learn glorious. something from those people, how to receive. I mean, oh, it's my. so simple and easy for them to receive. They don't argue about, is healing for me? Yeah. Uh, you know, shall I go be operated on or shall I not? 
They don't have anywhere to go be operated on. Yeah. And they just simply receive and the miracles just flow. He has got a new sound system that goes for five miles. <laughs> and they have to fly it so high, you know, it does, so it doesn't <laughs> blow everybody some away. set of pipes. But <laughs> five miles away, there was a guy at a bus stop that heard him before he prayed for healing, for the healing of the people. He was not in the meeting, hadn't even been there, but he heard him, and he heard his prayer, and he got healed at the bus stop five miles away. <laughs> and he got out of sight. He got healed. <laughs> and, uh, so and, and he was, he was a cripple. And he got healed. And after he got healed, he got born again. Sure. And so he ran to the meeting. Oh, <laughs> and and uh, this, this sound system will, will cover a million people at one time. Well, I have heard other stories. I've heard that dead are being raised to life again. Oh, it's, and just, it's just the, the miracles of the book of Acts yeah, and really of Jesus' is. ministry are just it being really done all over again. Well, if, if Christian leaders, pastors, and others want to go, what should they do? Should they call you? Your, I'm just been directing them to your to you. That's fine. office. That's fine. Fort Worth, Texas. That's fine. That's, fine, yeah. that's okay. fine. We'll take care of it from there. And okay. that's in the month of April. It's about the third week, isn't mm -hmm. it, of April? Yeah, do we know about what it'll cost for somebody to go and come? Paul, I don't. I it don't seems to me like it's between seventeen and eighteen hundred dollars. That's your hotel yeah. and your airfare. Mm -hmm. And as and I understand, it, not a dime markup is going. It's just no. the cost to yeah. go and it's, the cost. To come. Nobody's making no money on this. It's just we want Christian leaders to go over there yes, and be touched by this tremendous move of God. That's the going the on thing over. that I think is so important. One of the reasons that I'm so excited about going myself. I know Reinhardt personally and I've had opportunity to visit with him. I've had opportunity to uh, have dinner with the man. I know his wife. We've, we've had fellowship with them. He is so open. He's not the least competitive mm -hmm. with anybody. He wants to tell everybody uh, how I do this. He wants to tell <laughs> everybody what God's telling me. And his his dedication to the salvation of Africa is so overwhelming. He, he never prays without saying Africa will be saved. Mm -hmm. he, he, you can't talk small talk to this man. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. You say, how has the weather been? He'll say, well, in the meeting last night, it was wonderful and we had great <laughs> things happen. By the you know, I mean, everything is predicated around in the meeting last night. It yes, is just, yes, yes. It, and it, to be around a man like that and to be taught by a man like that, in my estimation, is, is priceless. Now, just tell us one time how he says Africa shall be saved. <laughs> oh, he says, praise the Lord, Africa will be saved. <laughs> That's the way a German says That's it. That's the way a German says yes, it. Yes, yes, I love it. All right. You will be saved. Yes. Yes. Uh, Joni, just put, uh, do you have a box number or something? Where, or just Ken Copeland, Ken Fort Worth, Copeland, Fort Worth, Texas. Texas. Zip code? 76192. Johnny That'll be up on the screen in a minute. And I have a feeling you better write in quick and get the little brochure yeah. if you have any idea you want to go. April, when do we leave? April the... I don't remember the exact date. It's... About the 15th. It's I'm around the middle yeah, of April. Yeah, it's, it's mid-April. Okay. Just write for the brochure. It'll come and tell you all the details. Debbie Boone's going to sing another song, and then I'm going to give you a little surprise visit with Arthur Blessed here just for five minutes before we get into the Word. Don't forget, we're going to get our Bibles out and have a great time asking Ken and Gloria some questions and ministering the Word. The song says, When I Accepted you. Debbie Boone, we love you, sweetheart. Sing again. You were 
It took a while to see that you bought God's rejection, so it never turned away from me. I never knew I would receive so much when I accepted. eternal restoration you took on the world so the likeness of God could be drawn upon my feet like a blood relation the deepest needs my lifetime Debbie, we'll have lots more good singing tonight. Be sure and pick up Debbie's album. They're in every Christian bookstore and pick one up and bless her. The beautiful Christian album. <laughs> and if they don't have them, ask for them. Yes. Well, before we get into the Word, and we just cleared the whole night tonight. We've got two and a half more good hours, and if the glory comes down, we'll stay till midnight or past. It's great when you own the, your, own, your own deal. Because right? people own the network, stay we just throw the clock out the window there and go. go. But anyhow, I knew this would bless Ken and Glory, because just a few weeks ago, October. at the uh, it was October, wasn't yeah. it, the Anaheim Convention Center, Arthur Blessett and Jan and I were sitting there, and the Lord spoke to Ken. I never will forget it. It was a very strange offering. <laughs> you said the Lord had spoken, but you wouldn't tell us what the offering was for. And to give. <laughs> but to give. And so what did they? God's people gave. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and after the offering had already been received, then the Lord spoke to you. In fact, I'm not sure you even knew when the offering was being received what it was for, did you? Or, or had the Lord told you? I knew. I knew part of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know all of it. The Lord didn't tell me all of it until I said I'd do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then he said, "I don't want anybody giving because of where it's going. Mm -hmm. I want it to come out of the heart. I've got special work for this money, mm -hmm. and so you receive the offering that way." And I said, "Okay." And all uh, right. Well, anyhow, we were all sitting there, and Arthur Blessed knew. And I don't know. Did he tell you the other side of the story? He was sitting there praying for direction from the Lord as to what he ought to do, whether he should go. He kind of felt the Lord wanted him to go to South Africa and walk with the cross. We had just returned. He'd been down there with me as we were working on the Christian TV station. And uh, so he was sitting there kind of really asking the Lord for some direction. 
And as that offering was being received, it's like the Lord dropped into his heart the fact that well, he said, first of all, it came as just a crazy thought. He thought, that's just me. He thought that this, you know, part of this offering is going to be for me. I mean, he said, no, that's just said, me. No, that's he, just me. That's just me. Ken, had you ever kinda, met Arthur? I've no, never I've met never him. met him. You had never met no, Arthur. I followed his ministry, but I, yeah. I never had met him personally. Anyhow, what he said, I, he put a little fleece out to the Lord, and he said, Lord, if Ken calls, calls me up, up I'm going to take that as a sign from you that I'm to go to yeah. South oh Africa. Oh, my. Isn't that did, did you know that? No. Did he ever tell you? He hadn't even told you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know the rest of what happened. After the offering was received, the Lord spoke to you that you should just give the whole offering and then match it from your other funds. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole thing turned out to be, what, 70 or 80? 85000 dollars $85,000. The Lord have mercy. Well, that settled it for Arthur. I mean, you called him up, you remember, and prayed over him and had a great time, and it was just a glorious time that night. Well, he went, and he just got back Saturday. Saturday. He's been walking. I mean, if there was trouble, he'd walk right, right to the, the trouble. He Praise. went to Sowat yeah. Soweto, you know, that terrible area. He walked Shantytown, through Shantytown. He walked through everywhere. Yeah. Went up through West Africa, clear up to Windhoek, and... And up to the border of Angola, he's walked the length and Three breadth months. of South Africa. And uh, he gave a little report last night, just before James Robinson preached. And so if that little roll-in's ready, I want you to bring my lights down here and let Ken and Gloria see at least a little part of that beautiful report he brought to us from South Africa. When we got around the cross... You couldn't tell. You didn't know who was rich, who was poor. Nobody cared who was white, who was colored, who was Indian. You didn't even, all those things went away. Everybody was the same, and it's moving that way. And let me tell you, there is a glorious move in the churches, especially all over South Africa. There are churches that have two kind of key words. One is, they're called Christian centers or Rhema churches. And they're totally multiracial. And they are, they are meeting by the thousands all over South Africa. If you want a news story, if you want a news story to come out of Johannesburg, they ought to report on what's happening in the churches. Churches three times as big as this, 50, 40, 40, 50, 50, 50 of all races. Meeting, worshiping, singing, praising God. These are solid churches I preached last Sunday at the New Hope Christian Church in Cape Town. It is only a year and a half old. 3,000 people at the Three Arts Theater of every color. Their music group, black, white, Indian color, they're all, you don't know. It's totally multiracial, but nobody ever reports that. Nobody is interested, you know. I walked for all these miles through s South Africa. The, southern, the, the newspapers in South Africa covered it. There was all kind of thing on television, in the newspapers, on the front page. Not one word from the American press because they didn't have anything bad to say, just something good to say. And they're not interested in anything good. They're not in anything good. If I had gone to Soweto and got stoned, I'd have been in the front page of our paper. If, they, if, I, if I had gone there and stoned them, I'd have been on the front page. If I'd have done something bad, but you go and do something good, nobody wants to hear of it. Because I think one of the most evil forces in the world is the American news media. All the way across, it is whether... And, and I think they're doing more harm in the world. Much of what they say is true because there is killing. There are riots. There is injustice. But they're not showing the other. That there's nothing else. It's, it, is, it is an abortion of the truth. And, 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 it's, uh, and it's, it's that way in everything. And so I, I just want you to know I come back optimistic, thrilled, and excited. Last Saturday in Cape Town, in uh, Crossroads, in the Shanty Shack town, on Sunday morning at that 
uh, Christian, uh, New Hope Christian Center with multiracial church. And last Sunday night I preached at President Bota's Afrikaans church where he and most of the cabinet go that is suit and tie, most conservative. It is the premier Afrikaans Dutch Reformed Church in all of South Africa. And I preached there last Sunday night, brought my cross in there, preached, hallelujah, the power of God was there. After we dismissed, the church stayed for over an hour singing, praying and praising God with raised hands. It was glorious. And, and there, because Jesus is at work. Jesus is at work in the land. So what I'm saying is there is such a reservoir of hope and good news. And, and this Sunday on South African television for half an hour, there is a half hour television program, the only one TV station that will be on the air at that time, SATV1, for half an hour, they followed me for days on the road. They filmed me on the road. And when they wanted to come and film me, you know what I said to them, James? I said, no, because it's beautiful what is happening. And I don't want to pervert the beauty of these wonderful people coming to me on the road of all races and everything and have some commentator sitting there saying, well, now these people are, look at the uneducated who are coming as this, you know, or some kind of American skepticism. And did you know they sent the editor, the producer, out on the highway, talked to me, and they said, we want to show the people just what's happening. So you give all the commentary, and we won't say a word. I have now here... When I flew out of Johannesburg, they gave me the tape. I have a video and a film, a television, one-inch version that we can, you can show on TBN if you want to. And, and you know what they said? I viewed the thing, and I am the voice on the entire 30 minutes, me talking, me sharing Jesus, and gave an invitation for people to receive Jesus Christ. And it was free. Hallelujah. And you can't, you can't buy Christian programming on the television. And uh, No, you can't buy. But uh, that's what I'm saying. Open. Joshua walked with me. And Jan, he, they had him on video too, which is their number one youth program. And they had Joshua with his cross bring a Christmas message to the youth of South Africa on video too. And Joshua preached on video too. I mean, it's been good, but in, in so many ways, let me add to it, you've got the hurting, you have the hungry, you have the impoverished, and you have a horrible system that has categorized people, that has destroyed so much that has to be built up, has to be built up. And, and so it is, it is, I am not condoning by any sense, you understand, by my lifestyle I broke every, you know what, you'll see on the film, every time somebody called me master, I called him master. I said, me not, I'm not your master, the Lord's your master. Don't call me master, Lord's your master. Some of you that grew up back in Mississippi, Louisiana, you understand what I'm talking about. And, and uh, so, and I... Whenever I had people out of honor, they would kiss my hand. I would kiss their hand. If they, and you'll see on South African television, on this program, there I come up to a man, you see, and the man takes off his, gets up and takes off his hat, and I take off my hat. I honor everybody. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what background. I, am, I honor him. He honor, I mean, and, you know, just lifting up everybody. And my whole thing, of let's make everybody feel better than we feel. Let's do something better for somebody than we get. Let's start giving. And, and, and that is the uplift we need. 
And if we pray and lift up all the people over there, the glory of God's coming, and there's power, conviction, Jan, the, I got to shut up. But I, I led. I've been leading. I, let me tell you, in Southwest Africa, it's Namibia, settled by the Germans, right? And and has been controlled. I have been over in Southwest Africa with those German settlers. They're from Germany. They settled over there. Still speak German. I mean, men, if you ever saw any of them, they got, they had toughest guys. You, I mean, they'd run over our little old, you know, tough guys walking around here, kind of hip, you know. I mean, they'd, you know, these guys are bad. And they stopped their pickup truck. Say, what are you doing out here in the middle of the desert with this cross? Not one sprig of grass. Nothing but sand. You won't believe it. And I said, God told me to walk across southwest Africa and claim this land for Jesus. And big old tears start swelling up in those guys' eyes. And they don't know what to say. And they'll say, Are you, Would you come over to my house and have a briar? Have a briar. That, that's a barbecue. They call it a briar. And I go over there and they invite the other ranchers. And I sit there sharing with them. And I have with me the guy who's traveling with me, and he's in there, a black guy who's traveling with me. He's sitting there. We finally all get on our knees, and those people giving their lives. See, I've seen more individual single men converted this past January than I don't know any month in my life. Not in numbers with crowds, but I'm talking about singly, one-to-one, -one, leading those men. I had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to walk through that desert because when daylight came, it was a constant car after car after car after car stopping in the desert. i got to shut up, but let me tell you this. One day on the road, one day on the road, there were seven buses stopped and nearly 20 cars, and there wasn't one house you could see in any direction. Just traffic stopped. Warning, warning, warning. And that, that is the South Africa that's out there and hungry for Jesus Christ. Thank you. So many things. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, my. Well, Arthur will be back now for a little while and uh, unless the Lord tells him to go off to China or somewhere. No money for him. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him home for a little while now. We need him here. Well, no, we want him to go wherever God wants him to go. But he'll be back to tell us lots more and the little films and things that he took. But I just had to roll in a little of that because I knew oh, it you can and glory. And oh, we appreciate that. La I, last night uh, I came in and, and turned you guys on and, and like we always do, and, and just as he finished, oh. just at that point, and I said, Gloria, I really would like to have seen what Arthur had to say. <laughs> well, so we, praise we the Lord. For you I really appreciate <laughs> that. All right, let's have Debbie do Boone sing one more beautiful song, and then for sure we're going to get these Bibles out and get into some exciting things. Come on, let's do it. What a joy to have Ken and Gloria with us tonight. Find a hurt and... Heal it, the song says. We're going to do that tonight. Put your love into action. Don't just talk about it. Reach out to help your brother. Don't just walk on by. Well, I know just one person can't change the whole world. But you can change the world for someone if you try. You Let them feel it, be a vessel of compassion to your neighbors day by day. Find the hurt and heal it, then don't be surprised to feel it. Why you're helping your brother, your own hurt is gone away. Well, do you sit around and wonder why nothing ever happens? Grumbling and complaining because nobody calls on you. Well, you can wait around forever, never get involved. You're 
say this is praise the Lord we're back home for a little while now and it's just great 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 to be home and in a little bit I know we'll have a prayer time together <coughs> many of you have already begun calling in your prayer needs before Ken and Gloria leave I know we'll have a wonderful time agreeing for the healing that you need and desire Ken <coughs> oh boy <laughs> where do we begin I'll tell you what there are so many brand new cable systems, stations, brand new believers. We get a stack of salvation slips that high every day. And you'd be surprised. Now, you live in this world all the time. And you think, well, everybody knows what faith is. Everybody knows what the faith message is. A lot of them do not. If you had to kind of sum it up in a short little paragraph or so, what is this so-called faith message that is such a joy and blessing and refreshing to so many and yet is the source of great criticism to others. Well, the force of faith is in the spiritual realm a great deal like certain forces in the natural realm. It's a spiritual force like gravity is a natural force. Electricity is a mm. natural force of power. It's a mm -hmm. powerful thing. A measurable, natural yeah, force. It's a measurable uh, mm -hmm. force. It's conductible. Mm -hmm. It's perceptible to the touch. Uh, faith is a spiritual force. It's perceptible. It's, uh, it is a tangible force. It's an invisible force. So is gravity, mm -hmm. but it's there. So is electricity. So yeah. um, it's conductible. It has laws that govern it. The book of Romans calls it the law of faith. Mm -hmm. And um, it is the only thing. And I, I, I get a, amused at people say, um, well, why do you study about faith so much? Why do you preach about faith so much? Well, when someone tells me that, I know right off they haven't heard me preach very much because I don't preach on it all the time. I just preach on it about 90% of the time. <laughs> but uh, no, I really don't. But you cannot preach any Bible subject without it because it's involved. And so faith's relationship to any Bible subject is vitally, vitally important. But it, I'm always amused when somebody says that because faith is the only thing that the New Testament says, at least what I, I haven't been able to find anything else that, that says it's impossible to please God without. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that makes it a, a very high priority item. Yes, sir. I can't find in there where it says it's impossible to please God without fasting. It's impossible to please God without a number of things. I haven't been able to find it. But it says it's impossible to please God without faith. Okay. What is it? First of all, um, 
as we said earlier, it's a spiritual force. It has a specific job to do in specific ways. It is the substance. It is spiritual substance. Let me go to the book of Hebrews and, okay. and let the Bible answer for itself. In uh, Ephesians, I mean, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, which is um, speaks primarily about faith. Let me just say real quick before you get into that, that for the next three nights, Ken and Gloria will be up at the Shrine Auditorium. I'll just drop this little word in now. We'll talk more about it later. But there'll be a gang just tuning by right now. And you need to know that the next three, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, yeah. February all 6, 7, and 8, in case this up gets rerun. The big old downtown L.A. shrine where Miss Kuhlman went for years and years. That old shrine has got a special yes, touch it on does. it. Amen. You're going to have church yes, in there. Does. It does. We've been in there before, and it's great. Yeah. Really um, nice. And uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Miss Gloria is going to be teaching on Friday morning, and then Saturday morning she'll have healing school. Mm. And so that's healing a good place school. to be. Yes. Amen. <laughs> okay, Hebrews chapter 11. In the first verse, now faith is the substance, hmm. ground or evidence, the cross-reference. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I believe it's the Amplified Translation that says faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not yet revealed to the physical senses. Mm. So, mm -hmm. um, faith is a spiritual force. Faith then becomes a shield. Ephesians chapter 6 says, above all, take the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Well, now, the first question that comes to my mind when I read that, since faith is a shield, it is a weapon, why would he say above all? Mm. Now, I'm like this about God and about the Bible. Somebody says, which is the least of the gifts of the Spirit? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... God's toenail is better than anything else you ever found. I mean, I just really, that's kind of crude. But I, I want you to know what I'm, what I'm thinking here, you know. Sure. I mean, really, man. How can you say the least of something that's important that's God's? Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. really, that's, that's kind of presumptuous to start with. They're, you know, to think that I'm going to decide what's least about God. Come on. <laughs> I don't think I will. But do that. I, I really, I understand now when we're studying like the gifts of the Spirit. I understand uh, that a ministry like the ministry of the apostle might take precedence over another type of ministry. But in their element, they do a job, mm -hmm. and they are the best where they belong. And at the time they're needed. Yeah. For, yeah. I, I, heard, uh, I heard Oral Roberts say this sometime. And, you know, he's a pretty fair country preacher. We yes. can follow him. Yes. And, uh, That's what he said. I think, he's, I think he's one of God's greatest. And, uh, and, and he's, I heard him say this 20 years ago. Which is the best gift? Talking about spiritual gifts. Which is the best? Mm -hmm. It's the one you need at the time. The moment. Yes. It's, Yes. There's nobody that could say really that, that tongues or interpretation of tongues would be a better gift than the gift of the word of knowledge mm -hmm. or what have you. Couldn't be. Now, the word of wisdom is the highest order of those, but it's not better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so he says it's the one you need at the time. That's the best. That makes right. a lot of sense. So, with faith now, when, I, when we talk about <coughs> the shield of faith, the question that comes up to me, why would the Bible then say, above all, take the shield of faith? Because we know we have the helmet of salvation. That's not unimportant. No. The breastplate of righteousness, my. Then we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We know 
Man, how could you be any more important than that? Mm -hmm. Yet the scripture says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I believe is the answer to that. Um, salvation is by faith. Righteousness, according to the book of Romans, is by the faith of Jesus Christ. Preparation of the gospel of peace on our feet. We're shod with that, the word says. Mm -hmm. So the gospel, that's the word. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Having the loins girt about with the truth, which is the word of God. So three pieces of that armor are, the word. are out of the word. And the book of Hebrews says that the word not mixed with faith availed them nothing. Hmm. So it's very important why the shield of faith, or very obvious why the shield of faith is so important, is because it is the catalyst of all of those things. It is the force that causes spiritual law to operate. Mm. Why is electricity so important? Now, let's explain that like this, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got this little monitor here <coughs> and uh, it's a real neat little television set that's all hooked in here and we can look right here and see ourselves talk and, and all that. That's great. Mm -hmm. The color's important. It's great. Good color. The mm -hmm. tube is important. It's great. The knobs are important, but above all, electricity. Mm -hmm. okay. Above all, electricity. See? Okay. Because without the force of that electricity, because there's nothing in that thing going to work. I don't care how good the tube is or anything else, and there's not anything in there going to work. The whole thing is based on the fact of being wired to the power. Okay? okay. Gotcha. All right. So that's why, above all, taking the shield of faith. It's not the only reason, but it's the most fundamental to that, mm -hmm. to the study of that part of it. Now, faith is a spiritual force. Consequently, it is controlled by and released in um, a spiritual way. Does God use faith? Surely. Now, now see, here's a sore spot. There are those. Not with who him. say not with, not, not with you? No, no, no. <laughs> not with God. I'm not, in fact, I'm not sore at God at all, and I don't think he's sore at me. I don't. Know, I haven't done anything to him. No, but the the critics say God is God. He doesn't have to have faith. He doesn't exercise faith. He doesn't use faith. He's God. He's the object of faith. Well, wait a minute. What does that mean? Object? I don't know what that means. I don't either. Sure. Well, we have faith in either. him. In well, other words, we have faith in him. Uh, our, that we exercise that faith. That doesn't change him having faith in me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and he does. He'd have to, man. He'd have to have faith, <laughs> Yeah, me too. Yeah. He can't be moved by what he sees. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to have faith. Now, when, when God Almighty sent Jesus to the cross, there was no other guarantee that, he, that it would work. It had never been done. The fact that he could raise Jesus from the dead really does not guarantee success. If nobody had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and they all went to hell, God would have lost the whole thing. Mm. There was no guarantee, Paul. The Bible says that the, that the cross was a mystery hidden in God. Had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory, the Word said. But God's omniscient. He knows all things. Didn't he know that there How would does be he know it? victory at the other end of How that? How does he know it? Well, if he's omniscient, which is one of the attributes we say God has, he knows the end from the beginning. How? He... By faith. Huh. You got it. He operates by faith. It turns out that way because he said it would. Mm. Mm. He what? He said it would. Ah, okay, okay. Okay? <laughs> right, this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, be right. careful this thing. It's loaded, brother. I mean, this, this thing will go off. Let me a little of that right now. <laughs> well, oh. now, you know, we, we have a lot of fun with this because it is fun, but, but this is serious stuff. This is, what, this, is what the, this is what the ages of time are made out of, man. This is where, 
where it all comes right down to it. You drive down the highway out here and you see some big power station somewhere. Well, brother, we are talking about, we are really talking about the, well, I don't know any better way to say it. We're talking about the guts of the whole mm -hmm. thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. The crux of it is then, when I or you or anyone, when we exercise our faith, when we speak our faith, when we do what this Word says, are, are we doing, in effect, the same thing the, that God did and the same way He did it and the same, I mean, is it the same total principle? Well, it has to be the same. God never changes. Uh, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. He said, have the faith of God. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, chapter. Uh, where they're in Hebrews, it's, this is talking about God's faith right here. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a very important line there. Because oh. it not only tells us what faith is, but it also tells us it's invisible. Yes. All right. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, if that ended right there, we, would, we could say, well, that's saying that our understanding is by faith. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't end there, and so we've got to deal with the rest of the thought and the rest of the statement there so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It's talking about things being made. It wasn't talking about understanding. It's talking about things being made. So through So it faith. had to be God that made it through faith. Whoa. See? Mm -hmm. It wasn't talking about understanding. It was talking <coughs> not, not understanding by faith. Of course, we understand by faith, but that wasn't what that was talking about right here. This is talking about God making things out of something you can't see, which is mm -hmm, faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Jesus used faith. Oh, yes. All the time. Well, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Another way we know Jesus used faith, look at the sixth uh, verse. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And the Bible said that in Jesus God was well pleased. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You cannot please God without faith. It says here it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus pleased God. He must have been walking by faith. Do you think that God has joy? Yes. Love? Of course. Yes. Of course. Peace? Yes. You think he's in peace? Yes. Well, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. Love, uh, faith's in there. Hmm. I mean, that is the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is the essence of God's very being. He's all of those things. You know, come to think of it, I don't understand why anybody's so upset to, <laughs> to think that, that God <laughs> used faith oh, to do God. this or... In all the, uh, in all fairness, maybe now. they just going to write a book and make money. Well, oh, <laughs> oh, in all, oh, oh. <laughs> ouch! In all, <laughs> in all, in all fairness, uh, most people react to those things because of the way they've been taught, and it, 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 it I'm sad to say that. A great majority of the seminary training in this country knows little or nothing about faith, the manifestations of God's power. If you want to find out what God can't do, then go to most seminaries. <laughs> really? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this is serious business. Right. Absolutely serious business. I'm on the Board of Regents at Oral Roberts University. I know, I know what kind of challenge it is in that place to keep that seminary in a place where people can come and learn and not lose their burn. Amen. Amen. It's hard there because the devil wants to steal it, brother. Mm -hmm. If he can get into that seminary, uh, academic compromises, most 
of the time they're created because of money, and they're, they're not done immediately. Some, some fat cat comes along and says, uh, well, now, Paul, uh, I, you know, I really believe in what you're doing, brother. <laughs> and, uh, but. I'm, I'm going to help you now. Yeah. I want to help you build your dormitory. And I want to help you every way I can, brother, because I believe in you. And I know you're running a little short to the tune of about two million. And, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, God's blessed us. And we have the two million dollars. But I'm going to ask you, if you will, now, I, I know you're talking tongues. And, and I'm not against that. Mm. No, no. But uh, I think you ought to soft pedal that just a little bit now. I mean, I'm having to deal with these boys downtown and all that. And after all, I mean, you know, if you dare, the next time he's going to have you soft pedal mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. next time mm -hmm. it's going to be something else. And the guy's going to buy you out. Yeah. And a few years Hi. later... You don't even recognize what... You can't even what... find God in there, yeah. much less anything about faith. Well, look how many times it's happened. All the colleges that were begun as Christian colleges yeah. Yeah. now teach Harvard, evolution. Yale, well, all of the big uh, colleges. Uh, there, there was a situation with the law school at Oral Roberts University, and uh, <coughs> uh, Oral Roberts is a tiger, <laughs> and he's a, an apostle of God. And you don't tie into an apostle just for fun. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. not... In, and live. And, and get by with it, you right. know. And so uh, they, they were holding out that the accreditation people at the Lane the Law School were holding out. Now, now listen to this. That law school, which is now attached to CBN University, mm -hmm. it still today is the only law school in the United States of America with the name of Jesus still in its uh, credentials. Really? My really? Word. Yes. Only Even Notre Dame Law School backed down and took the name of Jesus out of their credentials. Mm -hmm. For money. Well, I don't know. You know what? It, probably. probably. Mm -hmm. But these guys come in and put the pressure on, see? Yeah. Now, the pressure at Oral Roberts University, can you believe this? The pressure was because Oral Roberts University staff did not want to allow men students to marry men students. In a homosexual marriage? Is yeah. that And because they he objected to that. Yeah. They were not going to give the accreditation to our law school. Oh, well, I mean, oh, he just on. dug his elbows in the ground and said, Is that right? <laughs> and Ma, <laughs> you know, the deal was on. All right. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't buy Oral Roberts with his life. Jay. No way. But it's less for money. Yeah. Besides that, he knows how to believe God for both. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and we ought to be that way. And, and now, he did not see that law school in CBN University because he was afraid he was going to lose the fight. He, no. he, he didn't do it that way because he already knew he could win the fight. That's not lawful to do that. <laughs> and he, wasn't, he, didn't, he didn't do it for that reason. And uh, God moved in there and instructed that to be done, and it's been a very good thing. It's, it's a good thing it was. You know what? That same principle of compromise creeps in, tries to creep in everywhere. And I couldn't believe what I heard. I was, I was back east somewhere the other day, and I was listening to a Christian television program. It was a call-in type program. And this precious little lady called in, and she was desperate because a loved one was sick, and the doctor said it was dying, cancer, so on. And this moderator spent 10 minutes with this precious little caller preparing her how to accept the death of this loved one, preparing her psychologically, emotionally, 
It's inevitable. It's coming to us all. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to just scream oh, yeah. and take that television and throw it out the window. I tell you, I, I tried to call in myself and I couldn't <laughs> get on the line. I wanted to say, my God, pray for her. <laughs> the woman's desperate. She's crying out. But no, miracles disappeared. The supernatural thing of the past. You have just touched on something uh. that most people, uh, Christian or anybody else, miss or in most cases really I don't think people ever really realize or know anything about it it's something that that um, that I've adopted a phrase that I use I learned it from uh, from brother Roberts the key issue Jesus taught key issues mm -hmm. the key issue in Christianity is meet the needs of the people. All things are possible to him that believeth. Meet the woman's needs. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to get my needs met, that is not the key issue. Mm. Oh, oh. When I write a letter to my partners, I sit down and write my partners a letter, and, I, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm into this, man. I, I mean, I, my partners are top priority with me to get their needs met. Mm -hmm. And I spend time praying and studying and to get God's Word into that letter so that they've got something for 30 days that's a building block of faith mm -hmm. that, they can, mm -hmm. that, 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 that my partners and Gloria and I can, can uh, be used of God to meet their needs, see? Now, the key issue is what Satan tries to camouflage and make a key issue out of something that is not mm -hmm. a key. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For instance, yes. you remember when the woman that had been bowed over for years, Jesus said, seeing this woman's a daughter of Abraham, should she not mm -hmm. be loosed from this infirmity? Daughter of thy, how do you put that? Uh, look that up. It's in the Gospel of Luke. Daughter, thou art loosed from thine infirmity, mm -hmm. and immediately he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. Mm -hmm. All right. Lady with the issue of blood. No, that's not the no, 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 no. She's been that's bowed over for 18 right. years. Satan has bowed her over for 18 years. Now, what is the key issue in this? The day she was healed on? What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. That is not a key issue. No. But it was to the man that was head of the synagogue. Oh, yeah, because it was the Sabbath day, wasn't it? Now, he got diverted, see, in his thinking. <clears throat> Satan diverted his attention. Now, that wasn't because that man is dishonest, Paul. No. And, and the man that writes a book and, and, you know, and runs me through a keyhole two or three times, uh, he's not doing that because he dislikes me. He, he's not doing it because he's dishonest in most cases. It's because of what he's been taught. He's and a victim of his traditions. Yeah, and he, mm -hmm. and he hasn't seen the key issue in this thing. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this man said, aren't there six days a week when people ought to be healed? Well, she'd been in his congregation for 18 years and she hadn't got healed, man. <laughs> and he's hollering about six days. Mm-hmm. He didn't any more pay any attention to that woman, the fact that she'd been delivered. He could care less. The mm -hmm. key issue here to Jesus, mm -hmm. I must be about the works of my Father. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the works of the Father? Well, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's a key issue mm -hmm. with God. Oh, but Brother Copeland, you don't need to be preaching to these poor folks and telling them that they're going to receive something from God. That's not the key issue here, Brother. Mm. The key issue is to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. The gospel to the poor is not that he's going to have to stay poor for God to care anything about him. <laughs> okay. That's not the gospel to the poor. I'm yeah. sorry. I've been poor, and I know the difference. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, you know, I've been rich and I've been poor and rich is better. There ain't no two ways to die. I mean, a monkey's got that much brain. But anyway, we need to, we need to make sure we're dealing with key issues here. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone to write a book about how wrong I am is not a key issue to anything. Heaven it does no. not improve anybody's faith. It doesn't protect anybody from me. See what I mean here? That's not a key issue. The key issue is get the man's needs met. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, has a right, if, you know, he has as much right to find out what I'm saying as he does anybody else. There's not any place in the New Testament where it says, Go thou about and protect the flock from all of those that are preaching faith. Jesus himself answered people that said, should we go take the tares out that have been sown? He said, no, nah, leave them alone. My angels will separate them. Yeah, yeah. We really followed that one, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, th I was listening to, to James preaching last night, you know, and, and uh, he really blessed him. And he was in rare form last night, I thought. And he's preaching in all this. See, and I was thinking while he was talking about this when... And, and you've got to remember this, Paul. Now, I've got to say this again. There's not some guy got up some morning and said, Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I just had all of Kenneth Copeland I want, and I'm going to destroy his ministry. No, that's not what he's got no. on his mind. No, no, no. He's no. not thinking that way. God bless him. He's got on his heart, This guy's wrong, and I'm going to have to protect the body of Christ from and him. And he believes he that believes you're wrong that, because, and then he takes the scripture like. The, the scripture itself says that we're to reprove and rebuke, and, and he cites the, the fact that, uh, what, Paul stood up to Peter in the face of all of the congregation and rebuked him publicly for being off the beam in some, you know, and so they well, say there's precedent in the Bible. Well, if he wants to himself with the Apostle Paul, maybe we ought to listen. <laughs> if he's had many revelations. Yeah. Been caught up into the yeah. third heaven. Mm -hmm. Maybe we all list it. I read the Lord. No. Yeah, there, there's where Jan and I have come out on this thing. If any of these self-appointed critics want to write a book about you or any uh, of us, mm -hmm. if they want to stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord, knowing that if what they say doesn't come to pass tomorrow, they may be a dead, dead man, yeah. I will listen. Yeah, to think. somebody who will say, as the prophet came into David and said, Thus saith the Lord. But it's not thus saith the Lord. It's, it's their idea about this and that and the other thing. And, and you know, and, and I, I want to point out, I'm not mad at anybody. I, I love them too. But they're blind. You know, it, it's like uh, Helen Keller telling me there isn't any such thing as a beautiful sunset who had never lived, you know, who never saw one. She was born blind. And so, in a way, we've got to reach out in love. And, but on the other hand, some of the things that are going around the country right now, it's not just one person either. There's books and pamphlets and TV shows and all kinds well, of things. you know, Paul, if a guy doesn't have any more to write about than you and me, he ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> you know, now you stop and think about it a minute. Mm -hmm. He could be writing about Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he feels like you and I are wrong, mm -hmm. he ought to take what's right and write about it mm -hmm. and let the chips fall where they will. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to write a book about him writing a book about me. <laughs> you could. I, I, yeah, you know, I've had enough, I got enough time. material to take yeah. me a long time to do all that. But <laughs> that's, as far as I'm concerned, is a waste of my time. Amen. Yeah. Um, um, I'm extremely involved. I don't have but one purpose in my life. Gloria and I have one purpose, and that is to meet the needs of people and please my Heavenly Father. Um, I can't say what pleases the Father in the life of somebody else other than the things that I see in the Scripture that please Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do know that every time I have ever attempted to do something like that, it does not please the That's Father. Right. And mm -hmm. so I just, well, in the second place, I don't, I don't have time to fool with it. I don't want to labor a long time on this because... Uh, you know. We don't ever, yeah. we just don't pay any attention to that, to, to the books and the things and the 
critic criticizing. Mm -hmm. I think I learned something really good from watching Brother Roberts. I mean, there's not anybody that's alive on the earth that took as much persecution as he did. And well, people that really have just has. known about him in the last few years don't know what he went through. When he began to preach that God is a good God back in 1948 mm -hmm. and 50, Brother Hagin said that in churches where he went, that 90% of the preachers were mad at Brother Roberts for preaching God is a good God. You're kidding. No. Oh, yeah. I've heard I Brother Hagin say sure. that time after time. Sure. And he would say to those people, preachers what is what should he say you want him to say God is a bad God and they would say no but that will give people the wrong impression about God uh, well the Bible just says God is a good God I, I think no. and just see they true. had the wrong impression about God and so when mm -hmm. brother Robert spoke the truth they came against him and, and preachers got mad at him for it all over the country I can't help but think some of them are just mad because they didn't think of that first and uh, <laughs> and you know if, if there's anybody <laughs> that would prove to us that criticism doesn't matter I guess it's all Roberts because the more people criticize him the yeah. more blessed he got the oh, more sure. greater his ministry got you know a point I think that ought to be made right here <laughs> is a scripture that we want to get into here in a minute anyway and that is whatsoever you sow you're going to reap these self-appointed critics of people who are doing good works who are having the fruits of ministry who are healing the sick and preaching the gospel and they want to criticize and tear down and and and, and come against I just want to say a word of warning and love. You will reap a whirlwind of that criticism, that error, that whatever you're sowing. You know, if Ken Copeland isn't of God, you better leave him alone, just like the advice of that guy in the book of Acts, because if it's not of God, it'll come to naught. If it is, you're That's messing right. with God. You're messing with the things of God, and you'll reap a bitter whirlwind for it. Now, that's a warning that I think needs to be sounded well, across really this land. It needs, it needs to be, um, it's, a, it, 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 it's a fair warning because God's Spirit is moving. And we're at a place now where the time span is running so close mm -hmm. that there's not a lot of time left to mess around with God's grace. The harvest going to come up quicker. Yeah, it? it's coming, brother, yeah. faster and faster and faster and faster. And... I had a whole lot rather spend my time finding out what's wrong with me than what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Because if I spend my time figuring out what's wrong with you, it hadn't done anything about fixing what's wrong with me. And it's what's wrong with me that puts my life in danger, not what's wrong with you. Wonderful word. Good. Now, Debbie Boone's going to sing song in a minute, but just before she does, there's one other burning question that I think needs to be addressed not to answer the critic but I'll tell you what's happening Ken a lot of new little lambs are being confused and hurt and wounded and when they see factions of the body of Christ warring at one another casting bricks and stones they get caught in that crossfire and that's what my heart bleeds for we see the new slips coming in here at TB and every stacks of them new people brand new babes in Christ Mm -hmm. blessed of God now they're new creatures in Christ they're just, they're just wide eyed and, and, and they just think everything is fine and there's total unity and harmony with, and all of a sudden man one of those brick bats hits them in the side of the head and they get hurt and wounded so I think in a way we have an obligation mm -hmm. to, to, to clear up some of the things some of the big things okay here's one of them Something that just drives the critics crazy. And they, 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 they name you, they name Gloria, they name Bishop Earl Polk, they'll name Pastor Cho, they'll name, uh, you know, Dennis and Rita Bennett and others in the work in the ministry and in the author uh, book writing business. and Well, just everybody. And it's simply this. Somebody said, I don't know who said it, but they claim that you faith teachers declare that we are gods. You're a god. I'm a god. Small g now. But we are the gods of oh, this world. Oh, well, wait a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was well, facetious. I shouldn't have done that. You know, are you a god? Small g? We're born of God. We know that, don't we? Yes. <laughs> He's going to say yes. 
love it. All right. Stand back. <laughs> oh, Can I right. light the fuse? I think I just did. <laughs> the 82nd Psalm. All right. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. Now, don't you notice he makes a difference between the wicked and the righteous, okay? Okay. They know not, neither they understand. will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said... You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Hmm. Now, what he said here is, uh, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So he's not talking about angels, was he? Mm -hmm. right, no. Right. You could have used this word in translating that line right there. You shall die like mere men. You remember when the, when the Apostle Paul used that phrase uh, when he wrote the church at Corinth and says, are you not like mere, un mere men, one translation says, unchanged, unreborn men? Because mm -hmm. they'd gotten over into strife in the third chapter of 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And he said, are you not acting like mere men? We are not just mere men. Jesus was every bit a man. Yet... He was God, manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says we are one spirit with him. Yes, sir. I am a man. I'll always be a man. When I go to heaven, I'll not turn to an angel the day I get there or the millionth day that I'm there. I am a man. I will always be a man. I am a born-again man. I am a Holy Spirit-baptized born-again man. Okay. Okay? Okay. Now, I have been born again. I'm born of God. Old things passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Well, now, my body didn't become new. Hmm. So I must have been talking about my spirit. We know my mind didn't become new because the 12th chapter of Romans says that I need to renew my mind. Mm -hmm. All right. I am a born again, Holy Ghost baptized man. I fulfill those things. Those things have been fulfilled in my life. Mm -hmm. Before too long, I will be a born again, Holy Ghost baptized, resurrected man. Glorified and in a glorified mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. Now, am I God? Man was created in the God class. He was not created in the animal class. He's in the God class. Mm -hmm. He has a uniqueness about him that even angels do not have. And that is the God-given right to choose his own words and speak them thereby setting his own divine destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His own destination. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he can go to hell if he wants to. Right. Yes, sir. He can go to heaven if he wants to. And Jesus said, by your words are you condemned, by your words are you justified, and you will stand judgment for every empty word you speak out your mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a divine thing, see. Now, Peter said, by exceeding great and precious promises, you become partakers of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we gods? We are a class of gods. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Of course, he's in a class by himself. Man, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm, 
But at the same time, by his own authority and by his own will and by his own choice, by the will of God, the Bible says we are to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Mm. Now, I am not Jesus. But yet, at the same time, I am a part of his body. Yes. Because I'm one, I'm one spirit with him. But yet, at the same time, Paul, I st I'm still an individual, and I have my own individual personality. I have my own individual identity. She and I are one. Mm -hmm. Yet, I'm not a woman. Mm. She is, but, but together, the two of us constitute something on the God level. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can create. We can create life. Mm -hmm. I can't and she can't, but together we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can also create spirit life. Hmm. You do it every time you get somebody saved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you sow the Word. Yeah. The Word of faith comes out of my heart and penetrates the heart of an unborn again person. And they become born again by incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God, and it liveth and abideth forever. Mm. We are one with Christ Jesus. I am a man created in the man class. The man, the species of man, was created in the likeness of God. We're not created, uh, we are not created God himself, but God himself spawned us from his innermost being. Yes, yes. And so we are forever totally irrevocably connected to him just the same way that John Copeland, my son, and the way that Matt Crouch, your son, mm -hmm. is irrevocably connected to you. Mm -hmm. A seed produces after its own kind. It is the law of Genesis. It produces after its own kind. And we have been produced not only of the seed of God, but of the seed of Jesus. You know what we need to but say? He was a seed. See, God yeah. put Jesus, God planted Jesus as a seed and he was raised from the dead. Yeah. But now the Word of God says and teaches that everything Jesus is, we are. Everything Jesus has, we have. And everything Jesus has become, so will we. So call that what? by whatever I don't name care you want what to you call, call it. it. Huh? I don't care what you call it. When I come to town, Jesus came too. Because <laughs> well, that's what they're fussing about. Yeah, that's what they're fussing about. A bunch about. of silly semantics, isn't yeah. it? It bugs me. To when they talked to Jesus about that, Jesus hadn't said, "I'm a God." When they quit, no. when they no, came against him, mm -mm. he said, "I and my Father are one." And then, then it said the Jews answered him, saying, "He, he said, many good works have I showed." you when they threatened to stone him. Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these good works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man makest thyself God. How had he done that to, in their ears? He had said that he so was the, the son father. of the Father. Yes. I and the Father are one, and he said, He is my Father. Mm -hmm. Now they took that as blasphemy. Now, isn't that what you said, the people that wrote that oh, book? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And then isn't well, that the place where he goes back and quotes from Psalm 82? And then he, where he says, mm -hmm. that he yeah. said, Because thou being a man makest thyself God, because Jesus had said that I and my Father are one, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Hmm. And Paul, I... Uh, he was talking uh, to men. Mm -hmm. Let's get the key issue right out of this scripture right here. Okay. The same Spirit. That's what they crucified Jesus for. Yes, yes. 
was because he said, they said, you say you're equal to God. Well, I'm not saying Actually, I'm, Jesus didn't say, he said, I don't do no. any works. I don't speak my no. own words. But it's they the didn't Father hear that. in me. He mm -hmm. really hadn't They said didn't that. hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't hear that. They heard what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the key issue. That is an antichrist spirit. Mm -hmm. Christ means the anointed one. An antichrist spirit is an anti-anointed one spirit. Okay. <laughs> to be anointed of God, you're going to have to be one with him. Yes. Now, I'm saying by faith in the word, faith in Jesus, faith in the blood of Jesus, faith in the operation of God when he raised Jesus from the dead, faith in the name, faith in all of the things that... I find in the Word that declare that I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus, that His righteousness is mine. When I make a faith statement, and that's all it is, is a statement of faith, I'm not making a statement of pride. Mm -hmm. Now, the Antichrist, the anti-anointed spirit says that's pride. It also says that I don't know if I'm saved or not. Mm -hmm. It also yeah. says a lot of things. Yeah. But... I make a statement. Jesus and everybody else that wrote letters in this New Testament said, It's the Father that's within me. He doeth the work. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's the same statement. When I make the statement that when I come to Los Angeles, Jesus came. Well, certainly he does. He didn't come over here. He didn't come over here because I called him on the phone and told him I'd fire him if he didn't. <laughs> but he came. I said that because that's real to me. I'm not saying that trying to get somebody to believe it. I mean he's in me and I know it. And he and I are closer together. And, and, and my wife's sitting right here. I mean, I, she knows it as well as I do that... And, and she'd be as quick to say this and should as I am, as intimate as she and I are, I have a more intimate relationship with God than I do with her. Mm -hmm. That's the reason she and I are so intimate with one another. Mm -hmm. So does she. Her relationship with God is more real to her than her relationship with me. That's the reason that our being one is so real in our hearts. That's the reason you can't talk to me about divorce. Man, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. Because God and I are one. And the fact that these other folks are not teaching their young children the revelation of being one with God is the reason they can't understand anything about being one with a husband or a wife. You know, uh, whoa, something just hit me all of a sudden. When Jesus is speaking here, now, now correct me if I'm wrong, he was in his human body. He had laid aside his divinity, hadn't he? So he was operating as a man just as you and I didn't do any miracles until the Holy Spirit came upon him. So he was doing his work and everything in relationship with his heavenly Father and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So in a sense, in his earthly sojourn here on this, he was just like you and me then, wasn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. So here he... He did not do one miracle to prove he was divine. True. If he did, he failed. That, that because at Nazareth he could do no mighty yeah. works. See, he used faith in his Father, like the name of his Father, like the Word of the Covenant, like the 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 power of the Holy Ghost, just the like gifts we. of the Spirit. Just okay, like okay, but do you see where I'm coming? Yes, to I do. In other words, these critics would have to say that Jesus wasn't a God. That's, then. What, That's they what they, they say. said. That's what they finally crucified him for. Because he said he was the Son of God. And he was mere man. Now, what does the book of Philippians that say just about cleared this? cleared up for me, boy. What does the book of Philippians say about it? Now, you've, you've hit the key issue. Mm. Let's go to the book of Philippians. That's the key issue, and let's see what we are commanded to do, okay? Okay. Will you do... Let me ask you this. Will you do anything the Bible tells you to do? Yes, sir. If you I understand it's a command, I you'll make an effort to do it. Yes. Won't you? All right, let's see what it tells us to do. In Philippians... 
chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind, it won't just come on you automatically. And if you walk in traditions, you'll not do this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, he says, now, you ought to think that way. Mm. We do. But made himself of no reputation. I don't, I, don't th I don't call myself a joint heir with Christ Jesus in order to build me some kind of reputation. No. I didn't say that God is in me in order to make you think something great of me. I don't care what you think of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I don't no. care less. No. See? Mm -hmm. You're not the source of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel a whole lot better about it if you feel well toward me. <laughs> but, right on the other hand, Jesus said, you're in trouble when they all talk good yes. about you. That's the reason these guys really, really <laughs> thrill me when they come out with this stuff, you know, because I thank dear God. Uh, for one thing, somebody must be listening or they wouldn't fool away their time, you know, putting my name in the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, what happened here? He said Jesus came, took of himself no reputation, but his attitude was... I don't call it robbery to be called equal with God. I'm not robbing God to say that I'm his son. Mm. God's happy over this. I'm not making him mad to say I'm his son. It's I don't know why you're upset about it. It was all his idea in the first place. Yeah, man. God <laughs> wanted sons. Yeah. Well, no yeah. use in him sending Jesus if he didn't want some more. Mm -hmm. Just like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could have left me just like all... It could have left me the sorry turkey I was back there before I got saved, man, mm -hmm. if that's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, and he paid the ultimate price to get you and me. Yes. Why? To leave me like I was? No. Just as I am, just as I am, without one plea. Well, thank God he didn't leave me just as I was. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. So he said, you let this same mind be in you. Who thought it not robbery? Who thought it not robbery to be called equal? With Ooh, God? you're gonna really get them mad now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. They ain't listening. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they are. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you know, I bet they're not. Most of them are. <laughs> that that a, a guy that listens to what we're saying right. with spiritual ears, you can fi you figure you know out where is. we're coming from. See, now wait a minute, we ain't quite through this. <laughs> there, there, All right. There's a you you got to finish this off. Because you can't just read a scripture or two and say, well, that's it. It says that God exalted him. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Peter 5. The fifth verse, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. How? Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Now, it said he exalted Jesus who thought it not robbery to be called equal with God. Jesus the most humble man that ever walked. Yet he made statements like, I will come and heal him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yet then he turned around and said, it's the Father within me, he doeth the works. But I'm, oh yeah. And he just yeah. said, yeah. I can do nothing of myself. Mm. And then Acts says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Which with the Holy Ghost. Which proves the point that I tried to exactly. Th that his divinity his was set exactly. aside and the Father was doing it through He's him. He's the pattern of the reborn man. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Now, he went to the cross as the divine son, the spotless divine son of the living God. No other being 
in heaven or earth could accomplish that thing. But he walked in earth as a man, emptied of his heavenly rights and privileges. Came as a man, born of a woman. Um, he, well, he lived by faith all of his life, because it's impossible to please God without faith. And, and how else would his mother know Whatever he says, you do it. Now, that's the first miracle that he did. But he lived by faith all of his life. And she'd found out if he said something, it'd going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. So she said, whatever he says to you, do it. <laughs> Boy, she caught on to him real quick, see. <laughs> Boy, lived by faith. You ever wonder where James learned what he did about the tongue? James says things about speaking with the tongue that nobody else in the entire Bible says. See, bridling his tongue. Mm -hmm. It's set on fire. Yeah, how well he was raised in the house with Jesus. That's where he learned all that. He thought he was crazy when he was a kid, but he grew up and found out the man wasn't crazy. He was the son of God. <laughs> yes. See? <laughs> but now, the, the, the beauty of all of this is, in fact, I've had people say this to me like this, that, why you just lift yourself up to, on the same level with God? No. He lifted me up was. into heavenly places Whoa. and caused me to sit in heavenly places with him. Good. And then the same guy turned right around and said, Well, you're full of pride. You just pulled God down on your level. Oh. I said, No, I didn't do that either. <laughs> he came down here of his own free will. That's the, that's the story of the cross, bro. See? You know what we've got here? We've you're got a bunch of silly semantics. Yeah. And Everybody the devil gets all in there and twists it all up, and messes up what we hear and what, you know. Paul, you really want me to tell you what, here we're back to key issues again. Good. You want me to tell you what the key issue this is? Hmm. You go somewhere and preach, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand people come hear you. Mm -hmm. I go somewhere and preach. Gloria and I go somewhere and four, five, six, seven, eight thousand people come and hear us. You're paying your bills and I'm paying mine. You're flying a jet, and I'm flying a jet. And they go somewhere, and they don't nobody come. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> now, that's the key issue of the whole thing. Why don't they come? <laughs> 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 Bad news. You, you got down to the nerve on this one. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. That guy in that synagogue had been preaching there all that time. That woman there got healed, and he said the thing, I do everything right. I wash my hands when I'm supposed to wash them. I do everything like I'm supposed to do it, and ain't nobody got healed. And this country carpenter comes in here, and he get up and walk out. Now, something wrong with this. Now, that's the whole key issue to the whole thing. It doesn't have anything to do with the Bible. Nothing. <laughs> That's just some good old country wisdom that come out there. It has nothing to do with the Bible. <laughs> None whatsoever. I think you hit the nail on the head. Now, exactly I want to finish what I started out about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, right. okay. Now, I'm going to read the rest of this chapter where Jesus, where they came against him for saying he and his father were where one. Are you, Gloria? And you're going to see how this whole deal will turn out so you don't ever have to worry about that John book 10. anymore. John now, John listen to 10. this. Okay. Jesus had said, I and the Father are one. They had threatened to stone him. And then I'm going to take up where I left off. It is, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent unto the word, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? Mm. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So they didn't listen to him. And it said, therefore, they sought again to take him. And this is the way this always turns out, this type of persecution. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hands. You see, that sort of thing doesn't hurt <laughs> us. You know, the book's written about uh, where we're taken out of context and just pieces are said where you don't have any teaching around them, so it looks terrible, you know. He escaped out of their hands and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him. 
<laughs> See, yes. it didn't stop the people His from coming. His cries kept coming, didn't it? <laughs> John did no miracle, and this is what those said that resorted unto him. John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him. Mm. Okay. Praise okay. God. Look. Well, I tell you, if there ever was a chapter in the Bible that That's wraps right. that deal up, that is. That did it right there. It really does. I think we've settled that issue. Yes. Now, you know what? After mm -hmm. Debbie sings, I want us to get on in. Faith is so interesting and so wonderful and so important. I want to know how I may have more of it. I want to, Lord, the disciples prayed at one time, Lord, increase our faith. And that wasn't even the right kind of prayer to pray, was it? No, but anyhow, we'll get, we'll get into that, okay? Yeah. If you can't please God without it, you better be interested in it and but put amen. it on the top of your priority list. And that's what I want to, I want to learn in this, in this last hour here. I want us to get on into this, this, this faith message. It's been maligned. It's been blasted. It's been criticized. And that's we, they, they call you guys the, the, the confess it and possess it bunch, the gab it and grab it bunch. Isn't that the, you wonderful? Know, I mean, uh, you know, the, all that's kinds of bad names are going around about you all. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. You know, blab it and grab it ain't bad because I got it. <laughs> get, your, get your Bibles Somebody out. Somebody better sing. So get, out of there. get your Bibles out. We're going to really... Now I want to know how I can have this faith and exercise it. And if you've got a... Can you gab it and grab it? I, I want to do that, I man. I, well, listen... <laughs> Those naysayers have reached me and Jan too, too late. late. Sorry, it it's worked. the message of doom and gloom, and it doesn't happen, it and it works. can't happen because I know it works. Amen. I know it works. For those of you that just tuned in to Ken and Gloria, you're going to be three whole days up at the Shrine Auditorium. We right. hope all of Southern California turns out. You get hours of this. It's wonderful. Shrine Auditorium, February 6th, 7th, and 8th. And... Uh, what, when do the services start? Thursday then? night at 7. 7. And then uh, Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, and Friday evening at 7, and Saturday evening at 7. 7 and 10. Wonderful. And it's Beautiful. just you and Gloria this just time, huh? Beautiful. All right. We can only skim a little of the surface here today, but those of you that really hunger and thirst, after this word and want to be taught, come get on up there to take your Bible, the shrine. Take, take pad take, and pencil, yes, and go yes, and yes. learn. Wonderful. It's great. Debbie Boone is going to sing. Oh, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh. Baruch Hashem Adonai. I'm sure I mispronounced that, Doctor Blizzard, but forgive me. You can straighten me out when you come. <laughs> okay. he can't speak English. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Boone, God love her. <laughs> you 
Jesus, the veil has been parted, and what once was secret is known. Now I can cry to you, Abba, my Father, and praise you as one of your holy moment, didn't it? Amen. Praise Amen. God. You know, Paul, I think it's important for us to say this. Uh, uh, the things we've been talking about here, Gloria and I, and I know you and Jan are, we're emotional about these things because these are the things that delivered us from the pit of darkness. Man. Yes. These are the th Faith is, is something got me well. Yes. Us too. And uh, <laughs> saved my family. Yeah. One disaster right after another. I don't want to come across critically. No. I'm not. No. Uh, it, it's very difficult for me not to get emotional about it because when someone attacks the the heart of uh, of my life and family, it's, it's difficult. But there are certain truths that that need to be taught and preached regardless of what anybody mm -hmm. says or does about them. It's something that you teach continually. And we, we teach and preach a great deal about faith. The Lord instructed me years ago to major in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have any right to do anything else. Mm -hmm. The only thing that He instructed me to major on more specifically than the subject of faith, was in the laws that govern abundance. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. The laws of prosperity and, and, and how they work. And uh, the ideas that people have had about prosperity have been very, not only just shallow, but most of them been wrong. And I'm not talking about just Christian people, I'm talking about anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, True prosperity is the ability to use the power of God to meet any need in life. Spirit, mm -hmm. soul, body, financially, socially. Sure. And um, I don't want anybody to feel like I am um, reacting, no. you know, or, or uh, challenging. I don't have a challenging spirit about me to anybody but the devil. And I don't challenge him. No. You know, he challenges me every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But I don't challenge him. You, you control him. Yes. He's not a challenge. Amen. Amen. He's a defeated foe. Yeah. No, we, we hear that. We understand that. Like I said, we're not mad at anybody. We no, love no, no. all of God's people. And you know... To just kind of bring this whole thing to a conclusion, did you know 
that whether I like it or not, or whether you like it or not, if you're in this family of Jesus Christ, Jesus said that we are going to be one. We are going to be one. Actually, we're already one. Yeah. Well, in the sense of becoming yeah. like see, him yeah. and with yeah. his we're nature, already yes. already one. And Jesus, <clears throat> see, when he prayed that prayer, a large part of that prayer has already been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Because we, the Ephesians chapter 4 says that we've been fitly joined together by Jesus. And until he went to the cross and was raised from the dead, uh, that was the first fulfillment of that prayer. It was when he went to the cross and yes. was raised from the dead and made it available so we could be one. But now, what's happening now, you go and read on that, ver that, that chapter a little further in the 13th verse, says, till we all come into the unity of our faith, and not only the unity of our faith. I, I'll tell you, there's, a, uh, there's something there that's been overlooked time and again, and I don't want to run the risk of misquoting it. So let's read Ephesians 4.13. And... Um, Oh, I better get in Ephesians instead of Philippians. It'll probably read better. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 13, Till we all come in the unity of our faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not just the unity of our faith, but the unity of our knowledge of Him. Mm -hmm. Not doctrines, mm -hmm. but knowledge of Him. Uh, of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Now that has begun to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting to note that in the first chapter, he said, the ninth verse, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one. Might gather together in one mm. all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> another translation says there in the place of in the fullness of the dispensations of time, a dispensation of times, it says, in the maturity of the ages, hmm. the maturing of time. Mm -hmm. So, the body of Christ in its entirety on the earth could not have matured. Mm. It would have been premature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we can walk as individuals in maturity. But to have the body of Christ come into total maturity, it would have prematured mm -hmm. before the maturity of the age. See? Gotcha. Yeah. Now, what's happening right now, we're in, the, we're in the last stages of that, see. Now, we're talking about here maturing into the full stature of the fullness of Christ. In the unity of our faith and the unity of our knowledge of the Son of God. Uh, we're, we're, we're already one because, he goes ahead to say here, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. He's joined us together, but the joints supply the holding together. Mm -hmm. God's not holding the body of Christ together. If he was, it wouldn't be so fragmented. Mm -hmm. It's compacted by that which ever joint supplies. Uh, yeah. And that's what's beginning to happen right now. Yeah. The joints are beginning to supply compaction with one another. Mm -hmm. We're beginning to pull together. God's raising up James Robinsons and Charles Greens and John Jimenezes all over the country hollering, get it together, get it together. <laughs> we are one, now act like it, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so we're beginning, one joint's beginning to reach out and get the yes. other one and supply strength. Right on. See, right I've got a certain amount of strength in my arm, you've got a certain amount in yours, but we put it together, man, yeah. and, and suddenly it's stronger than either one of them was 
singularly. Mm -hmm. You know, Doc Whitaker told me a little medical uh, knowledge one day that just blessed me so about the body. He said that when a person or a body has a heart attack or anything in the body goes wrong, did you know that every other organ in the body will slow down and send all the life it can to that one body? He said the kidneys will slow down and send all their energy to the heart and all the other organs in the body will quit doing that full work and they'll say, hey, somebody in this body's hurting and I'm going to slow down and do all I can. Send the extra blood send supply all to the, the heart. Extra, and, and he said yeah. it is a medical fact that the rest of the body slows down from doing its functioning when one part hurts and then when it begins to heal and gets better and better then they all they begin to work together <laughs> and they all get their little energies all going back up. But isn't that beautiful? It really is. When we is. know somebody's hurting, let go and run to them and do all we can. You know, can the next step of that people. now, which I think is tremendously interesting because, yeah. you know, Doc and I have spent a lot of time yeah. in it. And it the entire body will give its life to save the brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The head. It will mm -hmm. slow down completely and For stop. the head. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It's like our that. head is Christ Jesus. Yeah. And the, the body of Christ should yield itself and its strength to an injured member. Yes. And all of us be willing to perish for the Savior of our Lord and our King Amen. and His work Good. and what He does. Amen. Amen. Paul, I don't care. Now, really and truly, now, now, it doesn't make any, it shouldn't make any difference at all whether you and I care for one another or not. It's for the body of Christ that this is true. Mm -hmm. For the sake of the core of Jesus, mm -hmm. for the sake of of, of the, the body mm -hmm. for the sake yeah. of the head mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. it get it together get it together man for the sake of the head Ooh, that's a new yeah the yeah. stomach doesn't say I don't care what's happening to the yeah. heart I got I, I got my pudding that's all I care <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't dare no. mm -hmm. because it won't be but a little while until it won't have any pudding if that heart quits mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and we need to realize this it won't be long if we keep doing one another that way it won't be long until there won't be any revival, nobody get be, uh, getting born again. So what's happening? We're, we're killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I really caught what James was saying last night. In fact, we're, when we do this, we're killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do that, you're doing it to Jesus. So. You know, I hope and pray that if you ever see Yes. Jan or me doing something we shouldn't do or so, you know something yes. wrong over here I hope you'll be like that other you, you'll run to us you know instead of writing a book about us and criticizing yeah. us and, you know yeah. run to me I hope if I ever see you doing something that I think is wrong I'll, I, I'll, I pray God I'll run to you and minister to you and tell you why I think what you're doing isn't right instead of writing a book about go, it. Let's go fall down somewhere yes. and cry out to yes. God until we find out how to fix yes. it. Amen. That's Amen. the key issue. Amen. Yeah. It isn't whether keys, I'm right or whether I'm wrong or whether you're right or whether you're wrong. The key issue here is to fix it. Let's fix it. Yeah. yeah. Get it fixed, man. Mm. Where the thing will still work and we'll still run mm. because of Jesus. Mm. Let's go back over here about faith. You, all right, all right. I, I, want, I want to talk about that. Are we that. back on he, uh, Hebrews 11 again? No, we're, no? We're, we're done past there. Okay. We're on the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. This is oh, what you good. brought up a while ago. All right. I think this is such a great scripture. I just really get, I, there are some scriptures I get a real kick out of. And this is one of them. Because, I, man, I, you know, I, I know these men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I know them so well. I, I've, I've read through this and I, and I, over and over and over again, you know, and I feel like I know these guys. Mm -hmm. First verse, Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. And I can just see Peter at that time, boy, he's thinking, man, I can feel this thing around my neck, you know. 
And he cast into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Mm-hmm. And here, the word rebuke does not mean, you dirty rat, you no <laughs> good. <laughs> rebuke literally means, uh, in this uh, case, and in the way Jesus used that word, said when he rebuked the wind and the sea, he just simply said, stop it, that's enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Peace be still. Yeah. Yeah. He told the sea, stop it, that's enough. Mm-hmm. When you rebuke your child, you say, now stop that, that's enough. And that's mm-hmm. love, doing that. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, you're not, mm-hmm. they're not talking about uh, dragging him <laughs> through the <laughs> briars, you know. Writing a book about him. And uh, <laughs> if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, oh, increase our faith. <laughs> how, in the, how are we ever going to do this? It almost seems off the subject there for a minute, doesn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they said, oh, oh, Lord, increase our faith. You mean I'm going to have to forgive him seven times the same day? I'm having a hard time forgiving him once a week. You know, I, I, man. Now, what am I, I going to do? And, and the, the other half of that is just as hard. You said you hoped i come to you. That's, that's hard, Paul. That's a hard thing to do. You don't want to do that. True. I don't want to do that. True. It takes a lot, of, a lot of faith and a lot of love to come do that. It's a whole lot easier for me to tell Gloria where you're wrong. Mm-hmm. See? Mm-hmm. And scatter it all over. Or to tell Gloria than... where she's wrong. Mm-hmm. No, it ain't. It oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, increase my faith. <laughs> well, now this is... <laughs> Now you're beginning to see you're beginning to see what these guys were thinking. See? Mm. Now they lost they lost sight of what he said. Yes. It sounded too big. They lost sight of what they had already learned about faith. They lost the key issue. They lost the teaching. Got in their own thinking and said, I don't have faith enough to do that. I can't forgive somebody seven times a day. I ain't got oh, that kind of faith. Oh, Ken, I'm getting this. The devil shifts it every time he off of the key. He shifts it off the key issue. Instead See, of Jesus the forgiveness. Taught, yeah. See, Jesus taught key issues. Oh. He said the key issue is not the storm. It's the foundation under the house. Yeah. He taught mm. key issues. They moved by what they saw and by what they felt, which is never the key issue. Never. Peter saw the wind boisterous, and he sank. The wind had nothing at all to do with his walking on the water. It had to do with his boat floating. (laughs) Right. And he's a fisherman. (laughs) But now, are you going to tell me if it's calm enough he could have been walking out there? No. There's no way. Well, it's not key to the, to the thing. The key issue was the word come and keeping your eyes on Jesus. That's what was key here. He got off that and got over on the wind, which was not the key issue at all. Mm-hmm. Now, they said, Lord, we ain't got that kind of faith, man. You're going to have to give us more faith in order to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. They got sidetracked. And so G- instead of saying... Well, now you missed the whole point of this, guys. I'm trying to teach you something about. Um, I'm trying to teach you something about repentance. I'm trying to teach you something about forgiveness. I'm trying to teach. No, he went back then to the basic teaching, and got them back on the key issue once yeah. again. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Now, not realizing this, people stopped right there and missed the key issue and said, if I only had faith this big, (laughs) that is not the key issue at all. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with it. Now, it is a truth. If you only had faith that big, it would work. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he's talking about at all. You have to remember... 
that he had already taught them. The sower soweth the word. Mark 4, 14. And then he says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. They said, Increase our faith. He <laughs> says, It's going to be measured to you the way you measure it. See, they forgot everything he taught and mm -hmm. got over on the impossibility mm -hmm. of the thing and, and lost the, the issue at hand. So is the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God. In faith of the kingdom of God? Yes. Yes, is sir. it a kingdom subject and kingdom force or is it not? Yes. Well, of course it is. You know, it's of God. Yes. It's a godly thing. So then we must be talking about faith. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing be true with love. Same thing mm -hmm. be true with mm -hmm. righteousness. Mm -hmm. Same thing be true with anything that's in the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, put forth the sickle because the harvest is come. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there is harvest time. When it comes, fellow ought to harvest it. <laughs> he ought not say, well, God don't want me to have anything. <laughs> he ought to harvest it. Sure. Amen. I had somebody say, I, I, I made a statement one time, I said, uh, I, I believe that we ought to live from our giving. I live on this principle of, of sowing seeds, and, and I don't work to earn a living, I work to earn seeds. My income is not fixed, even though I'm on a salary. Mm -hmm. See, I'm on a salary, but my income is not fixed. My salary and my income are two different things. I live on the kingdom of God, which is like a man who plants a seed. I earn seeds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I live off my giving. Ooh, say that you again. You mean you're supposed to get from God when you get... Well, now, wait a minute. Now, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with getting from God? Is it right to get from you and not from God? <laughs> and mm -hmm, I said that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they said, well... Only if your priorities are right. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Let's talk about that a minute. You mean if my priorities are wrong, it's still all right for me to have it. I just got to get it somewhere else. <laughs> if that's the way the reasoning goes. <laughs> or take it one more step removed from that. It's all right for me to have as long as my priorities are wrong. Whoa. Now, see, that old dog won't hunt. Mm -mm. You, for you California folks, that means that your dog's been beat up and he won't hunt for you no more. <laughs> and uh, they'll get that way. You can whip the same old oh, dog yeah. and he'll get to where he won't hunt. He'll just crawl under the truck and you can't get him out. It makes you want to kill him, you know. But, and he'd rather die than to do anything <laughs> for you. And that's the way this is. As long as my priorities are right, if my priorities are wrong, I haven't got any business having it. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is particularly well. So, I live on the kingdom of God principles, which is plant the seed and harvest. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read on. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? Now, this literally means, I mean, He's made two witnesses here that the whole kingdom is compared to this, so we better listen to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is like a grain of mustard seed. <laughs> now, see, they'd already heard about that grain of mustard seed. Yep. He taught them that the whole kingdom of God was compared to it. And they got off kingdom thinking and got on failure thinking, and they lost what he said he said some things here that they're going to have to use faith to do. They, they realize that. I can't do this without faith. They say, oh, God, increase our faith. We ain't got that kind of faith. He said, if you had faith the way I told you about that grain of mustard seed, you'd plant it, and it would grow. Mm. They missed the whole So it is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Now get this 32nd verse. Dear Lord, I love it. When it is sown, it groweth up and becomes. Mm -mm -mm. It groweth up and becomes. It groweth up and becomes. Okay. It groweth up and becomes. He said the whole kingdom is like this, man. 
it groweth up and becomes greater than all the herbs. Well, that simply means that if you need faith, plant it. It'll grow up and become greater than whatever you planted it for. If you need healing, plant it, brother. It'll grow up and become. Plant seeds for it. Plant seeds for it. Here's the seed and here's the harvest. This is the way the kingdom works. So many people are not getting any healing because they haven't planted anything, man. Okay, let's identify some of these seeds. Okay. So or so of the word. Okay. Now, I really enjoy this. I, I, the word of God is the living part of the seed. Mm-hmm. I wrap my money around it, and that's the husk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, you can give, but if it hadn't got any living seed in it, it's not going to grow. It's not going to produce anything for you. The Word is the seed. The Word is the seed. Okay. This okay. is the seed. The sower soweth the Word. It's the Word that produces a hundredfold. And this is the reason so many people are not walking anywhere near like the hundredfold return Jesus talked about in this. Now, some people say, well, it didn't mean money, but it did. Of course Fourth did. chapter of Mark, he said the, hundred, the seed would produce a hundredfold. Well, I don't care what's money or something else. Now, not many people have been walking in that. I've walked in a shade of it occasionally. I've had it happen to me a few times. But the reason, see, there were some that produced 60, some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. But he explained that. He said that's because that's the way you're measuring it. Mm-hmm. If you measure that it won't work money, it won't. If you measure that money will only work about fivefold, then that's all it'll do. He said, the way you measure it, it'll be measured back to you again. This is the living seed. Now, it's explained more explicitly in the 26th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy talking about planting the seed of tithe. Planting Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. tithe seed. And it tells you how to tithe Mm -hmm. the money is the tithe. Tithe not only means to give, it means to receive. Here are men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness, he liveth forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, it's receiving by faith and it's giving by faith. And it says that we take the tithe, put it in the basket, go before the priest that shall be unto those days and say, now, there comes the living seed, see. Where, where, where? That's 26th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. I got it. Now, we're talking about words mixed into our giving. Now, he commanded certain oh. things to be said before God, and one of them, down in the latter part of that chapter, it tells you what to say when you praise God in your giving to him. Mm-hmm. tells you the words to say. And it says that we are commanded to say these things. Mm-hmm. 26. 26. Mm-hmm. 26. 26. chapter of Deuteronomy. 16. 16th 15th verse. 15. 15. Now notice the 16th yeah. verse said that yeah. this day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Mm-hmm. Therefore you will do them in the 16th verse. Mm-hmm. Okay, back up in the 15th mm-hmm. and see what one of those... Uh, well, let's, let's put foundation under it. Uh, verse 13, Then shalt thou say before the Lord thy mm-hmm. God. There so he says, say this. Mm-hmm. Verse 15, Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us mm-hmm. as thou swearest under our fathers a land which flows with milk and honey. He said, say that before God when you give your tithe. So if you just throw it in the bucket and you don't say that, you haven't tithed it, you just bucketed it. <laughs> or if that's a word. You've got... Oh, yeah, yeah. So you know where words come in? Words, Jesus said, the sower soweth the word. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. I'm, I'm getting it. Well, hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> so so, so what, what you're saying is whatever your problem is, Whatever your need is, whatever it is, first of all, you find it in the seed of the thing in the Word, and then you say it, and then you do it, 
and you've done your part and the harvest will come up. Is that what you're basically saying? Except for one little element. Give. Yeah, you have to do it. Uh, um, yeah, right, right, that's the yeah, action. Right, right. Do you know, that's interesting. We speak our salvation. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The faith we believe in our heart. You ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why wouldn't all of the things that work in the Bible for us be a spoken thing? Well, you go back there to the fourth chapter of Mark. It says the whole kingdom is compared to a man planting a seed. You back up the 14th verse. He said the sower soweth the word. You can't sow words without saying them. Now, there's no, no way you can't do that. So That's, you sow with your mouth. You word. sow with your mouth, see. And now... Let's catch a thought here before we get away from, from this, no, this whole is, idea. This is so good. This is, um, this is good. In uh, Galatians chapter 6, talking about sowing money, okay? Chapter 6 in, uh, in the book of Galatians. Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate, the word communicate there means giving and receiving between the two of us, right? What verse you I'm in the sixth six, verse six. of Galatians 6. six. Okay. six. Mm -hmm. To communicate would mean if you communicated the word to me, then I'm supposed to communicate with you by giving an offering and help support what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, words mean anything. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. Oh, wait a minute. D do you know how the Living Bible translates that verse? Those who are taught in the word of God should help their teachers by paying them. That's plain enough. I believe I understood that. That's plain enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, what was he talking about? He's talking about money, man. He's talking about sowing money. Mm -hmm. Paying the teachers. He's talking about... He's talking about uh, Sowing seed into a ministry, okay? Now, we know in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he said that we, he, it, it, that increases the fruits of our righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what just slugged me tonight, just as I got here on, this, yeah. on the studio grounds. It hit me so hard. I was in the dressing room. It hit me so hard, Paul. It, it, it liked to knock me off my feet. The Spirit of God spoke to me and said in relation to this verse, something I had never thought of, to say that it is wrong to receive from me after you have planted in my ministry is to mock God. Mm. Boy, I'm mm -hmm, that's serious, mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. But see here, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For me to stand up and say that I'm going to sow in, into TBN and not reap a harvest from it is to mock God. You sowed into Arthur Blessed's ministry and you're going to reap well, a man, blessing. I'm already reaping from it. I'm reaping financially from it. I mean, dear Lord, I... I and it's not wrong to expect it. It's, it's mocking God, God if you don't expect it. Oh, that's a new word. That is a new rhema word. You really mock Did y'all get that? <laughs> because... Now, look what you have done. You have said, no, no, it's wrong for me to expect anything from God. Not what God said. Jesus, you lied when you said the whole kingdom is compared to planting a seed and the harvest will come. Mm. How come you lied to me about that? Mm. Oh, Lord. That's dangerous business, oh, man. Oh, amen. Ooh. That's bad business. 
to stand up and say, well, I'm not supposed to expect anything from God after I've planted. You had not planted. You mocked God. Ooh. Now, you will reap what you sow. You sowed bad seed, and you're going to reap bad seed. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Gloria and I live by this. If, I'm, if God tells me to do something, I don't immediately look for the way to do it. I look for the field to sow in. Immediately. I didn't get that way in an hour. I've been working on this man for 19 and a half years. The first time I ever heard it was in an Oral Roberts partner service under the tent back when I was a student at Oral Roberts University in 1967. I heard him teach on that, and it hit my spirit like a slug, man. I mean, it knocked me round and round and round and round. I'll tell you the first thought I had when he said two things. He said, you become partners with me, and, I, and you'll be prayed for every day until Jesus comes. Now, nobody else ever promised to do that for me. And the second thing that hit me was when, when he brought out the scripture that said, plant, and there'll be a harvest. The sower sows. You reap what you sow. I thought, now here's the thought exactly that hit me right then. I thought, this is a bird nest on the ground, man. <laughs> a and this is a cinch. <laughs> this is a cinch. Shoot. Here I am, a nothing. I have nothing. I don't have a, I do not have a dime, not one dime. <laughs> Here I am called to do a work of God. I know I'm called. I know a little about what I'm called to, and I don't have a dime. <laughs> and here is the man that is winning more souls than anybody in the entire earth telling you how to do it. Telling me <laughs> I can be his partner and get in on his deal. I went to hunting me something to put in that envelope. I didn't have, I thought, this is a cinch. Not only just a cinch from my side, man, because this is a cinch from his side too, see? Because mm-hmm. here he's called to do something he can't do either. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if enough of us little folks get together, he can go do it. And the bigger he gets, the bigger we get. Yeah, there right. it is. T.L. Osborne said, the way to get rich is find a preacher that's called to do more than he can afford. Because <laughs> in order for him to get the money, you got to get it first. <laughs> I got that. I got you start that. Supporting me. If I start supporting you, man, I got to get the money before I give it to you. That's the biggest cinch in the world. See, you, I saw that. And you know where the whole problem has come in? Mm. Again, Satan has shifted the eyes off of the main thing. And, and, and a few went out and abused it and confessed mm-hmm. uh, yeah. on a bigger Both Cadillac sides. and a bigger yeah, house yeah, and a bigger sure. thing. And, you know, and there was some abuse. We, right. we admit that. Right. But in that, the devil got our attention yeah. again off of the off key. the key issue. That's the whole thing the Holy Spirit's been trying to get sure. through to us tonight. What's the key issue of money? Ha. There's Deuteronomy. It's exactly right. The book tells you what the key issue yeah. is. We Remember, must. it says. <laughs> he knew you were going to forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, it is God that giveth thee power to get wealth. Hang on to the word power. Okay. Plug it in. All right. It is God that giveth thee the wealth, to, the power to get wealth in order to establish his covenant in the earth. Yes. That's what money's for. That's what TVs are for. Yes. That's what shoes are for. Yeah. That's what coats are for. That's what jets are for. That's what everything is for. Yes. Satan has yes. gotten yes. his hands on things and perverted it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I told you to hang on the word gospel. Power. 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 Well, I told you to hang on the word gospel. Oh. <laughs> no, you said power. No, I told you to hang on the word gospel. All right. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power, power. of God. Oh, the oh. gospel is the way you get well. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dear Lord. It all That's the only <laughs> true, real, honest way to get wealth in the earth is God's gospel. You ought to be getting it all from God. Mm, come on. I, the, gospel. <laughs> the whole thing just dovetails together. God is the source of our wealth. Yeah. Now, God didn't heal anybody so they can just watch TV more comfortably. 
No, <clears throat> no. He healed them. To get out there. To get out there and get in service. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Every dollar God gave you, he intended for you to use it some way or another That's in the gospel. Right. And, and the only way you can is when you eventually come to the fact that everything you do has to do with the gospel. All of it. Yeah. All of it. I don't have my gospel life and then my other life over here. No. <laughs> True. Everything in it is that way. Everything to me is a seed. What you just said cleared up the whole thing on this prosperity situation. That's and really, and that's the, really the key issue of it. It really is. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, let's just keep hammering away on it. Oh, yeah, amen. And amen. you know, one little point about the storehouse in the Old Testament, send all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Do you want me to tell you the New Covenant way? In Luke, um, now, of course, we have to keep the churches going. That's part of the kingdom of God, but it isn't the only place to give. In Luke 8, um, it says, Some women went along with Jesus. Johanna, Chuzza's wife, Mary Magdalene, Susanna and many others who were contributing from their private means to the support of Jesus and his disciples. They gave it directly yeah. to the man getting the gospel out. That's right. They gave it directly. <laughs> it didn't go through the temple. No. Not then. You now, they kept the temples open, of course. Oh, you yeah. know, it had to keep. Sure. But it is not Now, well, now another thing, to too, there, where ministries are missing it, Jesus gave into the temple. Yes, he did. He even he did. He supported and the And watch the little widow giving uh, in the temple. And that's the way uh, the whole system works as a whole and should dovetail together. And one support the other, that's supports it. the other, supports the other. Now... I can give you the, the, the key issue in tithing. When you're talking about who's supposed to get it, mm -hmm. where does it go? Tell do me. I take it all to my church do I, or what do I do with it? You know. What, okay, what's the word say? Now, God has not made pastors responsible for the handling of all the tithe. He, he didn't do that to any arm of the ministry. Dump that whole load on pastors. No. Pastors are not governors of the tithe. Hmm. The individual believer is the governor of that tithe. He's mm -hmm. the one that's going to be responsible to God for what he did for it. The with steward. It. Yeah, the steward of it. Mm -hmm. The one that's doing the giving. Now, 26th chapter of Deuteronomy again, where he explained how to tithe, he said, take it to the place where God has chosen to put his name there. Mm -hmm. Has God got his name on TV yet? Hmm. You better know oh, it. Oh, Lord. That's one of the best crops I ever planted in, brother. I got that. I got that. <laughs> where does God where does God put his name? Has God had it got his name on Kenneth Copeland Ministries? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you better believe it. Now, in the kind of the wrap up of this thought, why is it that God I know you've noticed this, I I've noticed it. Why is it that a man in the ministry does not get wealth by using the laws of the spirit that he's learned in the word out in the secular field. Very few God-anointed men make big lots of money in business and other things. Now, that doesn't mean you can't. But there is a combination here that, that's primary. Because man preaches the gospel ought to live by the gospel. See. And here's the key issue in this. If you as a farmer, what's your biggest problem? Two things. I've got to have seed and I've got to have ground to put it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I come up to my fence row, I've come to the end. Yeah. I ain't got nowhere else to plant. Well, what ground. if the guy next door came on to and said, Hey, Paul, don't worry about that fence. Come on over and take my ground. I got ground, except I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to share your seed with me. Because oh. I don't have any seed. I got some ground here if you got some seed. I, I saw it. myself standing in the middle of a field that was good ground and people walking by with sacks on their back. They were sad and I was sad. I didn't have any seed and they didn't have any ground. But I shouted out there and said, hey, bring your seed over here. This <laughs> is good Let's ground. The two of us together are partners <laughs> in the gospel. Good. Oh, oh I, I got, got it. The ground, I got it. You got the seed. <laughs> Lord, I wish we could go on all night. Remember, Ken and Gloria will be at the Shrine Auditorium up in L.A. 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Get on up there. Six, seven, and eight. Yeah. And uh, 7 o'clock, it starts Saturday afternoon. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. And Friday morning. It's Friday morning, Saturday morning. Let's start over again. All right. Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday, Saturday night. night. 10 o'clock okay. and, and 7. 10 o'clock and 7. 10 and 7. Okay. We're going to be praying for your needs Amen. as we say good night. But I want Debbie Boone to at least get part of this last song in. Oh, come, all you faithful. Praise what a you. joy to have her Praise here tonight. God. Glad you could be with us, darling. Ken and Gloria, we love Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you for Jay. coming. Thanks. Boy, we'll be praying for you guys. Oh, we love you. Might even sneak into the back yes, seat there one of the nights. <laughs> I hope we can get up there and see y'all. Love you so much. Debbie, sing, Oh Come, All You Faithful. And as you sing, we're going to be laying hands Praise on these Jesus. needs Praise and praying. Jesus. Father, in the name. Cassette of Praise the Lord, please write and ask for program 0205 86. That's 0205 86. The tapes will be sent for your love gift to the Praise the Lord program. TVN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN P.O. Box 262, Surrey, B.C., Canada, V3T4W8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. This is Jim Collins saying, God bless you. And remember, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United States of America.